Hey everyone and welcome to another Crimson Scales character preview stream. This one on the Inox Chain Guard. If you haven't seen a Crimson Scales stream before and you're wondering what is this? Well, Crimson Scales is a spin-off from Gloomhaven. It is a fan-made expansion that was available as a physical edition, but also available as a print and play and as a tabletop simulator mod that uses some of the original components from Gloomhaven to kind of create a new experience. And it's a real high quality fan-made project. It's not officially canon within the Gloomhaven world, but some really interesting ideas came out of it. The polished level is really good. And even the artwork was done by the original Gloomhaven designer. So if you are interested in checking it out, if you go to thecrimsonscales.com to check out the project and perhaps maybe give it a go yourself. A big thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon and on Twitch. I really appreciate it. And to Mike and Truck Driving Gamer for the legendary support. Thank you guys. That's very kind of you. If you would like to catch me live, come over to twitch.tv slash request every Monday, Wednesday and Sunday, where I'm usually streaming Gloomhaven or at least talking about Gloomhaven. So yeah, come hang out if you'd like to. Okay, let's get in to the Chain Guard. Okay, so today then we are looking at the Inox Chain Guard. Uh, the top of this is just all about Inoxes, so we don't need to read that. We, we're well aware where Inoxes are. So this is the bit about the Chain Guard. So, with the prisons in Gloomhaven severely underfunded, escape attempts by hardened criminals are a, commod a commonality, and only the most vicious Inox can handle the arduous task of guarding Gloomhaven's prisons. These Chain Guards have mastered their incredible strength and have a penchant for violence. They are posted in the toughest prisons or venture out as bounty hunters to take down the most notorious lawbreakers. The Chain Guard's intensive training allows them to channel their murderous cravings for survival and the satisfaction of their employers. Quite dark. So you like... You're like uh, Dementors <laughs> from Harry Potter, right? You're like the Dementors of the Gloomhaven world. Maybe not quite as, like, evil, but kind of the same kind of thing. <clears throat> I still need to get Forgotten Circles and do a Diviner video. Yes, you're true. That's true. That's, that's an area I haven't done. Because I still have... I've got my physical copy, but I'm, I was waiting for the new version. I really hope that they just add the character to digital, because then that would make my life so much easier. Um, okay, moving on to the Chain Guard character. Let's take a look. So, we got... 10 cards, so decent hand size. Not bad. Not the best, not the worst. Kind of in the middle, middle kind of area. And uh, so we've got our first mechanic here, Shackle. Uh, oh, let's do health, actually. Health, we've got good scaling health, actually. Look at this. Which you'd kind of expect being an Inox, like it'd be kind of weird if this was low, right? It doesn't really fit the design of the character, but this is a decent, this is decent health. Good health. Makes me, makes me think we're going to be a frontliner, you know? Also, the character's sort of general theme would probably dictate that as well. Uh, maybe a tank. Maybe a tank option. We'll see. The Chain Guard has a unique special ability called Shackle, which shackles an enemy by placing a character token on the target. A shackled enemy cannot perform move abilities while adjacent to you, and the enemy does not take that effect into account when determining movement. Interesting. Hmm. Cannot... Cannot perform move abilities while adjacent to you. An enemy does not take that effect into account when determining movement. Does not take into account the fact that it can't move when determining movement. Seems oddly specific. Not sure. Not sure why that's like worded in that way, but I'm sure there'll be a good reason for that. Read the example. Okay. Uh, if a shackled enemy dies or you perform a shackle ability on a different enemy, your character token on the former enemy is removed. In both cases, enemies that are immune to immobilize are immune to shackle. Okay. Right. A shackled enemy focuses Spellweaver. On, um, and determines a movement path to perform an attack. Because I'm invisible. Gotcha. Right. Once the enemy enters the hex adjacent to the chain guard, the enemy immediately the enemy immediately ends its movement and cannot perform 
any movement as well jason's a chain gun oh i see so it would go to like it wants to go here it would go to here the shackle would come into effect so it would stop essentially and can't move so it's kind of like immobilize but it's like a localized immobilize it's like you have AOE immobilized, basically. Right? If the enemy is shackled. <clears throat> A lot of the time your attacks get boosted if attacking shackled enemies too. I see. I get it. So... Hmm. So I'm guessing this character, this character might play around with invisibility a lot. That's just an interesting idea. Because he's not like... You know... Highly inconspicuous, right? <laughs> this guy, you're going to see him. You're going to see him a mile off. Doesn't really strike me as the kind of character that would have invisibility as a mechanic, but that could make it quite interesting. Hmm. I like the way that enemies that are immune to immobilize are also immune to shackle. That might be a little bit weird. You know, there are many enemies that are immune. I mean, the bosses, I guess. Just stops you from cheesing bosses, maybe. Sure. Certain bosses that aren't immune to immobilize, though, you'd be really strong against, I guess. Okay, well, that's that's like that's it. That's all that's written on this map. Now, we do know that another mechanic is sort of in it, which is swing. Um, so we'll briefly read that because there will be some cards that will come up with swing. So let's look at that. But I feel like this is fairly simple to understand for now, right? We just need to get into some cards and see how it's really going to kind of come together as a plan. Um, so let's talk about Swing just very briefly because people have said in chat that this is going to come up as well, but it's just not on the player map. So Swing is a new ability similar to kind of push and pull. When any figure performs a Swing X, either as a standalone ability or as an effect applied to an ability, they will swing their targets up to X hex. So like pull and push, like swing three, swing two, swing one, whatever. A figure can only target enemies with swing unless otherwise specified. Each individual movement of a swing must move the target in one direction, spatially at the same distance from the targeting figure. So you're kind of positioning them from like, you know, left to right, basically. Um, whichever way you want to do it. Um, however... It must always go in one direction. So I guess you could choose, I want to swing you. I want to swing you to the right. I want to swing you to the left. Clockwise, counterclockwise. You decide how you want to swing them. Um, if there are no valid hexes for the target to enter, the swing stops. Targets can be swinged through their allies, but not through their enemies, obstacles, objectives, or walls. So again, very similar to push and pull. If a target is swinged into a hex containing a trap, the trap is sprung and the target suffers its effects. Swing movement is unaffected by difficult terrain. Um, same as push-pull. Uh, when a character performs a swing, they decide how far and in what direction the target is swinged. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Any target of the ability or effect must be in line of sight of the figure using the ability or effect. Any figure immune to force movement is immune to swing. Uh, cool. I think that's very self-explanatory. It's just a different way to move people around, right? It's basically just push, but the hex distance stays the same instead of changes. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. Cool. Well, I think that makes sense. Like, nothing confusing there with that. We'll go over parks, like, before we go to level two, I think, with this character. We'll see how things go, but we'll probably do it, do it then. All right, so we just need to get into the cards then, really. It's all about the cards here. Yeah. So, Untouchable Keeper is card number one. Shield oneself. Shackled enemies treat you as if you have invisible this round. Okay. Interesting. 14 initiative and the bottom is heal 3 self. <clears throat> hmm. Shackled enemies treat you as if you have invisible. So that, that was like that example that we just had, right? This particular guy is like, oh, I'm going to go over here. So, I le that, so that's kind of like you can do a bit of control... But then still maybe tank up a little bit for, like, the enemies that aren't shackled. You can only have one enemy shackled at once, right? I believe that was kind of it, sort of inferred. Yes, only one. Unless, of course, maybe, maybe we get a card that will break that rule, but... <clears throat> 
Um, so I guess we would be shielding up against one enemy. Then the other enemy is just going to be like ignoring us and moving towards maybe somebody else. And then hopefully we can catch them in the shackle as they kind of come towards us. It's kind of an interesting idea. I'm not sure how like this... It's, it's immobilized, but with extra steps, right? But if there's other things that we can do to benefit from this, then you know, maybe that's going to be worth it. Hard card to really judge, because essentially what this kind of says is shield one, and hopefully, if you play it right, kind of take another enemy out of the fight. So control one enemy and shield up against some other enemies, which is not a bad turn. You know, if, if Immobilize would almost basically relate to Disarm for that round, then that's worth it, right? If, you, if his ability said something like, you know, Disarm 1 adjacent Shield 1, you'd play it. So, you know, it's, it's like that kind of vibe. But I guess you can permanently lock people down for longer, maybe, with Shackle, which is interesting. Yeah, hard one to judge without seeing, like, other, other Shackle effects, but... On the surface, seems like... Seems okay. Seems alright. Maybe a little bit weak because it's just a shield one and nothing more going on really. You know, for a top action, it's a little bit of a do-nothing action. But 14 initiative as well. Not too bad. Bottom is very solid anyway. Yeah, just healing for three as well on the bottom. Obviously, this would be nice if we could target this, but healing ourselves for three... That's always going to be a, um, it's always going to be just a useful ability to have a bottom heal on a low initiative at some point, or, well, on any initiative, really. Um, but yeah, you could, you could, if you were in the mix here, you could just heal yourself for three on the bottom and maybe do a top, uh, no, a good top action that would work well with a 14 initiative. So yeah, hard, hard one to like fully commit to this early on, but seems reasonable to me, you know, seems reasonable. You can also build Shackle primarily to boost your other attacks on one enemy. You'll see on the other cards. Ah. <clears throat> Good against melee enemies. They hit hard. Yeah, like against... Against like living corpses. Oh, this guy's going to be so good against living corpses, actually, right? Really good against them. And stuff like living bones, actually. Uh, when living bones start getting those really annoying, like, target... You're like a Living Bones Elite that has like shield two and it constantly has like target three in eight. Oof. This thing's hurt. This kind of guy, this guy could do a really good job against those because he just stops them from being able to do anything, really. Interesting. Okay. Choke hold. Shackle one adjacent enemy. Okay, so this is the first time that we've had something that actually shackles something. Uh, on your next three attacks, targeting a shackled enemy, add plus X, where X is equal to the value shown. Whoa. Okay. 2 XP. This is a burn. Wow. Thematically, though, this card's great. It's like your your the, the chains are tightening, right? You're doing more and more damaging, like the chokehold and like the fact that you're kind of like you're just like squeezing the life out of them. This is actually really quite good at a very specific job, right? Chuck this on a boss. You're laughing. Plus, if you can get other benefits from this shackle, seems quite good to me. Like, you just find that elite that you really want to kill. You know, that one enemy, that boss, whatever it might be. You know, every scenario has a has an enemy that's, you know, generally speaking, there's, most scenarios have an enemy that's, like, just super annoying. To really lock them down, deal with them in a very kind of, kind of quite clean way. I guess the only problem with it is that because it is a top action, you kind of have to give up a turn almost to kind of get it going. So... You know, in an ideal world here, unless, of course, we can play a bottom attack, I guess we'll see. Well, we should look out for good act bottom actions that might combo well with this top. You know, something that lets us to either immediately get really good use out of the shackle. Or something that um, maybe gives us an attack immediately, right? And then we can already get that plus two attack straight away. Something something like that. No, 
that would like combo just cleanly and easily. Um, so 22 initiative as well on this. Move four, one adjacent shackled enemy suffers one damage. Solid. I mean, I would play I would play a move four, 22 initiative without that shackled enemy taking a damage clause. So that's all, you know, cherry on top. That's all, that's all extra goodness in my books. So move four, 22 initiative, very playable. And then we got a nice little thematic... Um, kind of nods to our character and a bit of synergy with our character. It's very good. <clears throat> what do shackles do? Okay, so shackles are um, a special token that you put on the enemy. And if an enemy ever um, is ever adjacent to you, if a shackled enemy is adjacent to you, they cannot perform move actions. It's a little bit of an interesting mechanic. So the idea is, is that, you know, you've kind of wrapped them in chains. And when they're adjacent to you, they can't move out of those chains. So they, they physically can't move away. Now, they can still attack you and stuff. But you're going to get benefits for the shackle. And you're also going to get cards that kind of play around with shackle. Like this. Which stops the enemy from being able to move. But also not being able to, like, attack you. Because you're going to be invisible. So, like, there's going to be... It, there's going to be times where it's going to work a lot like Immobilize. There's going to be times where it's going to work a lot like Disarm. And there's going to be other times where it's just going to be buffing you damage. Like this. Right? So, it's... um. I guess the best way of thinking about it, in a in a way, is it's kind of like Doom, but it's not Doom. It's like Doom, but you kind of, instead of changing, like, putting the card out every time to say, like, oh, yeah, now, now my Dooms do this, now my Doom does this, now my Doom does that. You know, it's more of a case of, like, you shackle an enemy, and then maybe you have, like, a sequence of cards that would, like... You know, this turn it does this with a shackle. Next turn it does this with a shackle. Like, maybe it's a little bit more like that. I don't know. That's my initial kind of, like, feeling with it. Melee Doom. Yeah, kind of like a Melee Doom type thing. With some, like, tricks up its sleeve. So this is, this is, uh, this is an outstanding card, I think. I really like this card. Thematically great as well. Like, Chokehold. Perfect name for this card. Um, uh, yeah. Really, really like this. You can tell that this is the kind of card that you're going to have for a long time. You can enhance this as well. I mean, if... I'd probably put jump on this. I mean, I don't know what the move's like. We'll keep going, but... I move four, 22 initiative. Maybe chuck jump on there. I mean, you're laughing, right? You are absolutely laughing. Um, or maybe you want to put... Some, I don't know. Maybe you want to put an element on there. I guess we'll find out. But, I, you know, instinctively, I'd think jump. Yeah, you enhance jump on the bottom of this card. Yeah, that seems like anything that's like a move four or more with an enhancement dot, I think is always begging for jump. Just begging for it. All right, good start. Let's move on. I'm liking it so far. Two, like, I feel like that card there, that's like cool. This is like, I like this way of playing. You know me, chat. I'm an aggressive player. I like to play aggressively. So that, that feels quite aggressive. Okay, drag through the dirt. Swing three. So this is our first instance of swing. So it's like push, except they always have to be the same distance away. Target one adjacent enemy. Add muddle if the target is shackled. Then attack three. Okay, so this is this is a really interesting idea. And this could this could work in different ways. So one of the problems that push and pull has as a mechanic, right, is that generally as you're playing, um, it's hard to kind of put an example on the screen, but as you're playing, right, generally the enemies are always going to be, let's say you, you're in the, you know, you've just gone through a door. So you're at the beginning of a tile, like at the front of the tile, and they're towards the back or they're sort of spaced around in the room, right? The enemies are always going to, the enemies are always going to be coming towards you. And because of focus and the way it works, they're always going to stop kind of in front of you, right? And that's where they're always going to be. They're just always going to be kind of like wedged in the front, which is why certain patterns I found to be often quite hard to hit with AoEs. So uh, Crackheart, Opposing Strike, for example, feels like that should be a pattern that comes up really often, but it just, it just doesn't seem to happen a lot because... If you're pushing through a room, enemies generally tend to kind of go to you. It's rare that they'll kind of go towards the back of you. It's just rare unless you jump into the middle of that, right? It's just 
the way they move it just doesn't really the game doesn't flow that way whereas swing is an interesting mechanic because it then gives you the ability to force enemies into weird positions which necessarily they wouldn't normally be in which means that maybe aoe patterns that you know typically i think well i don't really like that pattern this could give you some really good positioning of that right <clears throat> swing equals move enemy around but it must not end further nor closer yes exactly yeah you got it and it has the same rules as push and pull like you can't push them through um you couldn't push them through one of their enemies but you could move them through a, an ally you can't you can't swing them through an obstacle um but you can swing them through traps which would trigger and, and do all that good stuff so swing swing is an interesting mechanic and it's something like this what's an interesting idea here is what's the value here of potentially separating an enemy and moving them from the front of your character to the rear of your character if somebody like a um a scoundrel will absolutely love you for this a scoundrel player should be licking their lips to an ability like this because suddenly all of the enemies that were like you know you're trying to get enemies that are adjacent to one of your allies but not adjacent to one of their allies suddenly like wow you just swing them behind you bang dead right like that already i'm seeing a really good synergy with the scoundrel and swing just because it's like you want you want to pick enemies out from the pack and move them to like positions that are are annoying and you often use smoke bomb pull to achieve that right you just kind of kind of briefly pull them away early on but can sometimes get a little bit awkward when you're trying to go for like that big that big backstab play because you're like well they're adjacent to an ally but they are adjacent to an enemy because this is another annoying enemy won't go away Something like swing could really work very well with that, whereas push and pull would not necessarily work well with that, right? Because the because you'd be either making the enemy kind of come closer, like next to one of their allies, or pushing them away, so then they're not next to one of your allies. Like you know, there's a weird kind of um, thing happening there. But repositioning an enemy behind you could be really cool. <clears throat> smoke bomb visage is a staple turn one play for you yeah absolutely if you've got it on the if you've got it on the board right you just do it but as you know like as you as the kind of as the the level progresses that combo becomes harder and harder to hit because the enemies start to group together naturally you know they group around your other characters as they're trying to kill you you know they're trying to attack you so it becomes harder and harder to hit it whereas something like swing could really reliably be like hey just stamina potion that back I'll swing him behind me on the next turn. Isolated on their own again. Off you go. Easy visage. So really cool. Um, some, some really cool synergies here with uh, with the scoundrel in particular. Um, I don't think any other characters really work in that kind of flanking. I mean, like the, the whole kind of like flanking and separation mechanic is kind of unique to the scoundrel. I don't think anyone else really has benefit from that. But yeah, as an example. <clears throat> or to split those enemies, that bonus from being adjacent to their friends. That's another good one. Yeah, absolutely. So when you're against like snakes, vipers, you know, they get bonuses for that. Um, in Jaws of the Lion, rat monstrosities get bonuses for that. Absolutely. So this is, this is, I think this is actually pretty good. Model on top of the shackled is so-so. Attack three though is good. And note that you don't actually have to attack the thing that you swing. So you can attack something different. So if you wanted to, you could swing one enemy behind you and maybe attack an, a different enemy entirely, right? These are two separate actions because of the line that denotes them. So you can choose how you want to do that. I mean, that's, that's a very, that's like a very kind of uh, interesting card, I think. Hard to like 100% like say, yo, yeah, it's going to be amazing. But ultimately, it's an attack three with a very cool utility kind of stapled onto it. So that's that's that could that could, you know, really help you out at some points. Could be very clever. So, yeah, I like it. I think this is good. <clears throat> <clears throat> Mm -hmm. 
Banner spear patterns? Yeah, really good for banner spear patterns, Sultan, actually. That's a great point, too. Could be a really good character for comboing with that, for sure. Okay. Um, the bottom of this is a burn. Okay, 30 initiative. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Like, I feel like you might pair this with something else. Um, so, Shackle want to chase an enemy. Move six. Sorry, jump. Move six with jump. Then pull six. Target one shackled enemy adjacent to the hex you occupied at the start of the mission. Oh, of the action. Sorry. Mission? Don't worry, I said mission. <laughs> at the start of this action. Okay. Okay. So basically, we shackle somebody. We move wherever we want to move. Then we pull them with us, essentially. Pull them along for the ride. Which could be quite clever because you could just go through a bunch of traps and then just pull them through those traps behind you. Would be a very good way of like clearing a path for your allies potentially. Or for let's say you have one enemy who's in a really annoying position and as a tank you really want to group enemies together. That would be a great way of you just kind of moving to the middle of the room pulling one of the enemies that's like in a weird position with you all the way and then you can kind of group all of the enemies together in the middle as much as possible it's a good way to kind of just kind of suck the whole room towards you if you wanted to or hazardous terrain yeah mm -hmm. it's like a cowboy throwing a lasso while riding a horse yeah exactly just bringing them along for the journey i like that analogy don't know if you'd want to do this with a burn but it's a real cool thematic card um, yeah, I mean, a move six jump on burn is not great, right? His katana, it's not a good, that's not a good value burn. Um, interesting. So far, we've only seen two ways to shackle and both of them have been burn abilities. So we've got to keep an eye on that. I presume we'll be able to shackle things without burning a card, but maybe not. If that's the case, then maybe it's like we need to use them. But with a 10 card character, I would assume we would want to shackle maybe one enemy per room. I feel like that might be a bit harsh. So we, again, we'll have to kind of look look out for it. But so far, both of the ways to put a shackle out have been burns. So, um, so it depends on uh, the value of this might be quite high. I don't know. So maybe it's worth just having it. But if you could move six, pull one enemy through, let's say, two traps, and that kills them, then essentially you've played like a move six jump, kill an enemy, and that's pretty good. So there's going to be spots where this is actually going to feel really good. Except for the fact that I guess you then lose your shackle. So, you know, maybe you, you lose the shackle value because they're dead. But I mean, that's, that's a pretty, that's a fine problem to have, right? <laughs> that's a fine problem to have. If the top is solid enough, you never mind too much having a situational big jump in panic situations. You don't want it, but it's nice to have there if you want it. Yeah, and, and also you can just use it to grab chests, you know? Like, as you say, if the top, if the top is playable, and I and I think that this top is, is playable, very playable. So, you just have this, you know, in a worst case scenario, you burn it to go grab a chest at the end of the scenario, right? Maybe kill something or do some damage to something in the meantime, whatever. But helps you get loot. All right, nice. Okay. Let's see if we can find some ways to shackle enemies, shall we? <laughs> um, okay, follow the chains. Attack three, push one. Add push one and gain one XP if the target is shackled. Okay. So attack three, push two. Move two. The movement must end adjacent to a shackled enemy. Okay, interesting. So attack up for three. Then potentially move forwards towards them if you wanted to. No. Weirdly, you don't actually have to like. This is quite flexible. It doesn't. It feels like it's really encouraging you to do this all against one target that is shackled. But really what you could do here is you could do attack three push on something that isn't shackled. If you only needed to push one, right? Push it into a trap. It's only push one you need. Then you just move two to the other enemy that might still be shackled, but might have gotten away from you. So there's like... 
this obviously has to be next to the shackled enemy. But in theory, you could split these actions against a non-shackled shackled. I do think it's obviously encouraging you to kind of use them together, but it doesn't have to be. <clears throat> Good for springing traps, then walking through that area. Yeah, this character so far has got a lot of um, kind of control, um, movement control. Which was a very common theme with the Red Guard, right? I mean, this character has got elements of the Red Guard there, but is is different. So, I mean, a move a, a move action on the top, even if it's situational, can often be quite good. So, it, it, as well as if we've got usable bottom actions like this, you know, I mean, a, a, a good turn here is you know, attack for three, push them for two, move a little bit closer to them. You know, move a bit further into the scenario. Heal yourself for three. It means that you can use those bottom actions for stuff that isn't a move, maybe, if you wanted to. Or you could be really, really clever with your push and just push them somewhere where you can, like, you know, move to the side of them or something. You know, you only have to be adjacent to them. You don't have to be, like, you know, you don't have to push them directly back and then move directly forwards. You could sort of, like push them off to the side here and you could kind of angle yourself so then you're kind of more into the center of the room or something. So then they're off on your left and then maybe you have an enemy on the right or something, you know? Like there's some play there, for sure. Hi, Avalani. Thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub, buddy. I appreciate it. 18 months now, buddy. Thank you so much for all your support over these 18 months, man. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back. Quest continues, my friend. <clears throat> Okay, the bottom here, retaliate one. Self, 19 initiative as well, by the way. Good initiative. Uh, add plus one retaliate against attacks by shackled enemies. Okay, so... I mean, at least at level one, we know we're only going to have one shackled enemy. I mean, unless there's some card breaks the rules somewhere. We'll see, but... That's basically just retaliate two. Not bad. If we had some shield, I guess. Feels like a bit of a... Uh, Plus two, retaliate. I mean, against one... Uh, uh, I don't know. That seems a little bit weak to me. Seems a little bit weak to me. Oh, noot, noot. Hey, Bones. <clears throat> the only thing I love more than retaliate is big burn heals. Hey, we had like... We've seen some good retaliate. We've seen it. I just don't really like... Like, this on its own, to me, is a bit too... It's a bit passive. It's just a bit passive, that's all. And the fact that we're just getting one extra retaliate against one enemy... I guess you're playing two-player. Maybe that's good enough. I don't know. Does Shackling have a base effect? You missed the beginning, like Immobilize, I guess? Yes. Styles, yes. So it's if a shackled enemy is adjacent to the chain guard, they cannot perform a move action. It's not immobilize. It's slightly different. Is if if a shackled enemy is adjacent to the chain guard, they cannot perform a move action. So this would be like guaranteed retaliate against a shackled enemy, right? So it's like it's guaranteed retaliate damage as long as the enemy's attacking. I, I think this is fairly weak. I think the, the top is is pretty good though. So but I feel like this bottom is maybe a bit so so. Maybe in two player, maybe against certain enemies. Like you gotta kill like a living spirit or something. There's something with a lot of shield and not much health. Maybe it would be beneficial to do so. Gives you a little tool to deal with those enemies, maybe. But I'm not super convinced. What are the perks for this character? We'll go over the perks when we get to level 2. So before we go to level 2. But presumably we're going to have some... 
fairly decent attacking perks. I, I would be surprised if we didn't have something like rolling shield as well or something. Or rolling heal or something. <clears throat> you think it's decent, but it's not the top action nits? Yeah. Maybe it's just my... Again, this could be a little bit of my bias of playing on like, you know, deadly coming out a little bit too. Like, I do generally undervalue things like small retaliates because you know in my mind i'm being hit for seven and doing two damage back that's a really bad trade um that's like just where my mind goes for this kind of stuff <clears throat> it's not the most exciting but it's something attack two is a good bottom and in many cases this is better well, no. In many cases, this is better. In some. I'm going to say many. Like, depend depends on many factors with that. If we get a lot of strengthen, like, if we can strengthen, that's not necessarily better. It's... We have to take damage to deal damage, so it's a trade. So, I always feel like attacks are always going to be better than re retaliate, unless... You can, you know, do a big shield turn, which maybe we can do, and maybe then it's a bit more of a moot point. But mm. we could lock ranged enemies down, so a disadvantage that helps us too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. We can also just muddle them with stuff like this too, right? So you know, there are ways that we can mitigate the damage, of course. Yeah, but I don't know. I just, to me, it's just fine. Like. I, I doubt I will be playing it, you know? That's that's the way. Like, I look at a card like this, so I think... I I doubt I will ever find myself playing the bottom of this card. It will be very occasionally. The top of this card is is good, so I'll probably end up playing this. And this, I just I just don't see myself playing it very often. Um. Okay, next up, Locking Links. Attack 2, Shackle. Aha, here we go. Non-burn Shackle, we got it. We got it. At the start of each of your target's turn, if it's adjacent to you and shackled, it suffers one damage. Oh, baby. And this stays out until we choose to discard it. Oh, this is good. Oh, hell yeah. This is great. So we get to attack something and then shackle them. And then basically this card will just stay in our active area until we choose to get rid of it. Um, and just this guy's just going to start taking damage. Like it's just wound, but it's it's better than wounds because it can't get healed off. You know, it's just going to be there forever. Permanent wound. Yeah, basically. And it's better than wounds because <laughs> yeah, boy. It can't be healed. It, spicy. it can't be removed. There's no way that it can be removed. <clears throat> it's wound, but it requires you to keep a card active. Yeah, it's true. But if you think about like... So, this would be like the equivalent of the mind's weakness on this character, right? <laughs> it's like the equivalent of the mind's weakness... You know, you always probably want this to make this the first card that you play in every room. You're like, right, I'm going to play the top of Locking Links on the first turn of every... Oh yeah, like, that's probably going to happen. And then before you go to rest, you discard Locking Links to get it back, right? Or if maybe you're mid-room and something else dies. The thing is as well... Um, I, the, the wording of this card's a bit weird, actually, I will say. I think the wording of this card's a little bit odd. You can shackle only once. You can only have one shackle out, yes. Uh, as per the normal rules. Like, I would be shocked if we don't have some card that says, you can shackle two enemies. But, yeah, it's as a base rule, we can only have one thing shackled at once. I think it's the, the top of this is, is a great way to get the shackle out 
And you even get some value. If you can go early enough, maybe that turn as well. <clears throat> Honestly, you weren't that impressed with this card. You almost exclusively used the bottom. Well, well, I mean, so far we've had no other way of getting a shackle out without burning a card. So just for that, I mean, this could, this, 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 if this even wasn't here, attack two shackle, I'd be all over this card right now, right? Because I haven't seen any other way yet. So we'll have to see what, what the other cards are. But I mean, we're five cards in and this is the first time we've seen a non-burn shackle. So, so the bottom is... 41 and create a uh, two damage trap in an a an adjacent empty hex she has some really good synergy has some really good synergy with uh with jack through dirt swing him into the trap immediately very nice 30 initiatives a bit of a weird well it's not that bad actually it's probably fine you'll probably get away with it on 30 you'll probably get away with it Know that this guy does not have to be shackled to get the swing. You just only get the uh, model if there. That seems okay. <clears throat> if you recreate the permanent effect applies only to this shackle. Yeah. So I was like what I was saying a minute ago about the wording on the top of this card is a bit weird. So it says at the start of each of the target's turn, if it is adjacent to you and shackled, it suffers one damage, right? So... This doesn't say, this doesn't say, um, at the start of each of a shackled character's turn, it suffers one damage or something to that effect, right? It doesn't say that. It specifically says at the start of each of the target's turn, meaning that the target of this, if it's adjacent to you and the shackle itself is one damage, which makes things a little bit weird if you were to start if you were starting to get multiple shackles or if you were to move the shackle around because of course the shackle wouldn't um if if you were to then shackle a different enemy this would imply that this effect would not work anymore but it's a bit odd because it's kind of like it's hard to keep track maybe maybe as the levels go on i don't know maybe if we never get any other way of you know, having more than one shackle, it's very obvious. It's very easy to track. But I could see it getting a bit confusing if you wanted to move the shackle around and then whether or not this triggers. I would say it wouldn't because it says at the start of each of the target's turn, which is very specific. So it'd have to be the one that you targeted with the attack too, and it is shackled. No moving that shackle and keeping this one damage effect up. So it couldn't be like... It wouldn't be like a doom in that respect, you know, like a doom that moves. You know, if you move, um, whatever it's called, the the two damage level one doom. If you move that doom, impending end or something. Um, if you move that doom, like you would keep doing that two damage, right? It doesn't work that way. Hey, epic nerd! You just got Gloomhaven on Steam. Awesome, buddy. Nice. Well, I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> Race to the Grave. Thank you. That's the name of the card. The idea being that specific attack is to apply the second effect, so it's tied to the target, not being applied to the shackle effect directly. Yes, which I think is a little bit odd because, like, as Nitz just said, like, it's using the shackle token to denote that. But for example, what if what if there was a way for me to remove shackle from this character, put it on somebody else, and then put shackle back? I mean, we're talking wild hypotheticals here, but you can see how like possibly people could I th I personally follow the cards pretty clear on how it should work. But I feel like it doesn't maybe work how people might instinctively think it does. Right? And they say, if you only ever, like, if you just shackle one enemy and you only focus on them, you're never going to run into a problem with this. It's never going to come up. But if there was a way for you to, like, move the shackle around and then you move it from this character to somebody else, this character would technically still be marked, 
buy this card, but wouldn't be shackled. But then if you were to shackle them a future turn, then they would then fulfill the requirements again, you know? Kind of weird. Um, anyway, <laughs> weird hypotheticals aside, um, uh, we haven't seen anything that cheats the previous shackles. Yeah, we haven't seen anything that can do that yet. So it's purely hypothetical. Um, I, I like, I, like, I mean, this is great. I mean, so far, this is possibly our strongest card. I mean, although I think... Kind of like this one quite a lot too for the positioning but i guess this works really well but no i mean like we'll see how many more effects we get like this just a non-burn be able to add a shackle but, but it seems pretty premium right now we may just be required to play a card like this we'll see but a very good top very good bottom initiative sucks but a lot of the time on cards like this that are very strong you, you kind of balance it by putting the initiative as rubbish so then you force players to have to choose you know right what are you gonna do you know the card isn't just you know play this card and then chuck in some random card into the mix just to come up with your turn it's you know and you just use it as a move too whatever i don't care i've got great initiative on this it will force you to pick a other card for its initiative um which is a, a kind of a way of balancing some effects out i found um okay next up Merciless Beatdown. Attack three, add plus two attack for each enemy adjacent to the target. Interesting. Okay. Merciless beat like why do they why do you get additional are you getting everybody else to gang up on them? <laughs> Is that the theme for that? <laughs> no, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. It's kind of like thematically a little bit weird. Like, so what are you doing? You're kind of getting them to beat up their buddy. I really need to have at least two enemies adjacent to make the loss worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, and even then it's so-so, right? Also, being a melee attack, remember that, you know, realistically, the best you can hope for here is maybe three adjacent. I wouldn't go much higher than that. Two to three adjacent. Like, I don't feel like you want a magical Christmas land this thing. And I would argue that if you're, if you're in a situation where you have one enemy that you can attack for like a bunch with just this one card, you're probably in trouble. Like you're going to be surrounded by other enemies that, you know, on their turn, going to snap onto you and just merciless beat you down, right? <laughs> like, you don't really, like, big burns like this are usually better used when, you know, you've kind of, like, dealt with most of the room and you just need to nuke something down. Like, I don't really like to play a big burn that only targets one character, like, pretty much hardly at all. But when I do, it's like, I want to assassinate this one thing. But that would mean that you'd have to have a plan for all of the other enemies that are around you at that point, right? Like, what are you going to do about them? You got to hope that your allies are controlling them or something, I guess. But it's, um, yeah, it's very, like, it's, you know, in that situation, you're probably thinking, no, I need to control something. I need to you know, play some shield or turn the field, you know, turn the battle field around a little bit. Like, it feels like you might be... In a bit of a bit of a problem, you know. <clears throat> Please have strike thunder jet doing these attacks with a miss in the deck. Yep. Scoundrel players again. <laughs> That's how it feels. Okay, so I'm 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 so so with this. I'm so so. I feel like this could be one of the this could be quite a yeah, I think this could be quite a bad effect in general. Unless we have a way of making like everybody like else just not really matter, but it just like killing one enemy in a group of six enemies is not usually a great idea. A good example, a good example of this actually, a really good example of this is um, Void Warden because Void Warden's got a lot of a 
burns that do stuff like this, right? They're like one enemy attacks another enemy, does this, takes some damage, blah, blah, blah. Like has these kind of like fairly big burn attacks, but they only influence a couple of enemies. And often it's like, no, if I, I can do that, and sure, it'd be good. I'll do a bunch of damage, maybe kill something. But I'm then going to be just destroyed by these other five people in the room, and which means I can't play it. So I, I don't know. I feel like this one's actually maybe fairly weak because the one time I'd want to play this is against a boss who's... I mean, I guess maybe you might be playing like against um, a boss... And they're surrounded by their minions, maybe. Like, for example, some of the late... Some of the late Gloomhaven bosses, like Sightless Eye. Pretty good against that. Um, maybe against the old... Um, the old rat guy, wherever his name is. The Overseer, is it? Probably pretty good against him. There'll be certain enemies it'll be good against, but uh, I don't know. Jack Sarah, maybe? Yeah, Jack Sarah. I just don't I just don't I just don't feel like realistically it's gonna be a great value burn. Like it's too risky. What if the adjacent enemies assholes were pushed one or two and or immobilized? You're picturing a fight in a schoolyard where everyone is circled around. That could be an interesting idea. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the, the bottom of this card. So 26 initiative is quite good. So maybe the bottom um, ability will save this. A force one adjacent shackled enemy to perform an attack three. Attack an enemy adjacent to it with you controlling the ability. I mean, that's good. That's really good. Situational, but it's, it's, an, it's, it's an attack three. It's actually really quite cool. That's very strong, I would say. Apart from the fact that obviously the enemy's attack modifier deck is always going to be... You know, it's going to be so-so, right? It doesn't improve, really. They can you know, they can have blesses put in, and but they can also have curses put in. And they can have strength, and they can also have muddles, so... I don't know. You know, like, I, I feel like an attack three will, you know, maybe it'll, maybe it'll end up being amazing. Maybe it won't. But it's still probably worth playing. It's still very, still very good value action, I think. Attack something with retaliate? Yeah, exactly. So the best use of this banger, you're right, is to use some kind of innate innate enemy advantage here with this. So, you know, Jaws the Lion, Zealots have wound. Um, certain enemies have uh, pierce. Certain enemies have poison. So you would want to use whatever the enemy's innate abilities are against them, against each other, basically. And then that's where this becomes kind of like top tier. Yeah, definitely. Then it becomes like a downright amazing action because you're really getting a uh, great value. <clears throat> so far, it seems like a lot of situational stuff. You got to work around and do the same damage as classes without all the extra nonsense. Well, I don't know about that because like the bottom of this, in, in my opinion, is pretty strong. Like... I mean, the enemy has to be shackled, though, which is maybe the slight downside here. But in theory, you could move them around. I mean, obviously, you would add model them to them, though, which kind of sucks. But yeah, maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe not so much. I think this is very playable, though. It's a shame that this top is, in my opinion, fairly bad. So... It's a, sh it's a shame that this isn't at least something a bit more. And I, and I don't even... Thematically, I'm not quite sure how this works either, to be honest. I guess the idea of they're creating like a little ring isn't an, is an, an idea. But then it's like... Why are we getting extra... Like, it's like they're attacking their buddies. Like, Merciless Beatdown is not... Like, it's, it's just almost like a mind control card in a way, thematically. But the name doesn't really bring that to me. I don't know. 
Maybe I'm just not... My brain's not going there with that. This is, yeah, this is more of a beatdown. This works a bit better with the top, but I'm not sure. Okay, next card. Rusty Spikes. Create a three damage poison trap in an adjacent empty hex. Nice, not bad. We know that we're going to have lots of... What well, we've seen already, we've got push, we've got pull, we've got uh, swing. So we know we've got lots of interaction with traps. So, you know, it shouldn't be hard for us to force an enemy through this trap somehow. Um... 18 initiative, and the bottom is move two, shackle one adjacent enemy. There you go. Simple, but effective. And crying out for a plus one move enhancement, I would say, most likely. Um, unless we have an element we really want to. But this looks... I get, like, the same as this card. I feel like this is premium. It's going to be premium. And the good thing about it being on the bottom is we can immediately get some use out of that shackle, right? Immediately get some use out of that shackle. So we could we could we could straight away like follow the chains and just go straight through again. Like there's quite a decent amount of movement. You want to fix traps and be a trap smith, so you might try to top. Well, the thing with the thing with traps, though, is that I think I like them more as bottoms than I do tops, because then obviously you can use like pull abilities on the top, hopefully. But not necessarily a bad thing. You know, something like this could would would work with it. And okay, it's a burn, but it would work with it. Well, the, the bottom of this card is is absolutely, like, where you want to be. So, and this is an auto-include, in my opinion. And the top, I think, is interesting. And perhaps with some uh, certain uh, bottom, other bottom abilities or some, you know, future turns, this could be, could be okay. Like, three damage and poison is an okay kind of effect. The problem with traps has always historically been they... You have to then spend several actions to make them work, right? So you put this down, right? You've kind of given up one top action to do that. Okay. You know, that's one action. Next turn, you have to give up another top action to then make them go into the trap. And then maybe that top action doesn't really do too much either. It's like you're kind of sometimes you're just compounding like a bad turn onto a bad turn or like an, an average turn onto an average turn. That's kind of like the problem that traps have always had is that really all of the other things the game does, it just does it better. So I have said that maybe the general lowering of power level could actually make traps a bit more viable because then we're not just comparing like Toxic Bolt to this card. We're comparing like, oh, actually, this is the most effective way to get poison and pure damage out or something, you know? Like, there's that's when I feel like these guys could start to, a stock could rise in this type of thing. <clears throat> oh, don't take me out of context album <laughs> you know what I meant don't take it there <clears throat> if this was a six damage trap it would be too strong oh yeah for sure like six true pure damage would be too strong Say so, like, traps are just hard. Traps are hard to balance because they're on that tipping point of being way too strong potentially if you were to up, up the numbers too much. But if, if unless the general power level of the game can kind of come down to where they need to be, I think I just think it's they're very hard to balance and get right, which is why we've always struggled to have a class that's been really good at just chucking out traps and using them. It's been difficult because they just don't. Like, the action economy is not quite right. But if we were to get to a place where the character gets the right kind of toolkit, 
and the things like stun, disarm, poison, curse, all these things become a bit more premium and they're not as prevalent and they don't just get stuck on attacks every single time. It's just like, oh yeah, here you go, it's an attack. Here's an attack one stun, you know. Like, you know, that, like as long as he stopped doing that kind of thing, then it, I think it gives a bit more breathing room for this kind of stuff, right? <clears throat> hey, nerd, when would I consider playing Gloomhaven with viewers again? Because you would love to join on Sundays. Every Sunday, buddy. We would love to have you. You'd probably want to use this bot every rotation to set up. Mm. I, I think that's generally where I'm at. That then does... That then frees this up too, right? Frees this up maybe a little bit. Or it gives you like... You know, you kill one thing and then you can go and shackle something else. I don't know. Just seems very... Just seems very good. See, again, necessary. Like, it's it's necessary. If you want to play with shackles, you need ways to put shackles out. And uh, say so we've only seen two ways to do it so far. And this one seems very, very easy to do. Very easy to do. You think all trap cards should be two plus the level, just like all the traps in the scenario book? Hmm. The problem with that is that then you have characters that scale with the difficulty of the game differently to um, their cards. So you would have a character that's actually like technically stronger on deadly than on normal, which I think is a bit weird. I don't know. I feel like that messes a little bit with that side of things. Maybe you'd have to come up with a rule for that. I don't know. Uh, so slamming shove slamming shove is that a v attack three push two move two attack three to xp burn so six attack with a move in the middle a bit of push i guess a pretty average burn pretty average burn not not terrible But average, I would say. <clears throat> okay for level one. Yeah. For a burn. Move two, heal two self. Very playable though. Very playable. Looks like we've learned from our mistakes, though, huh? No enhancement dot. Looks like uh, we've learned from the Mind Thief mistakes. <clears throat> yeah, no enhancement dot on the heels. Sad, Sabatone. I know. It's almost as if, like, they know. <laughs> it's almost as if that would be broken. <laughs> so, therefore... <laughs> hmm. Doom Stalker has a similar card. Yeah, he has um oh, what is it? It's like it's like something rest or something, isn't it? It's like an 80 something initiative card, yeah, 90 initiative. I usually put Bless on Mount for him though, because I go the um expose build, so I have advantage anyway. So I just I go plug in all of the uh moments piece. Yeah, there you go. Plugging it full of uh, blesses is what I like to do. But yeah, if you don't want to go the exposed build, yeah. Same, you put a bless on as well. Yeah, I like bless on that spot. Cool. Well, this is one of those cards that just might be on the fringe of being cut because it's. In my opinion, this card's on the fringe of being cut. Just trying to give is it better than this, but mm, 
14 initiative. So 25. I, I, feel, I feel very meh about this card in general. I'm not excited by it. You're a frontliner, you need heals? Yeah, maybe. Maybe we don't have that much shield as well. That's fair. But then, like, you want to have a support characters exist for a reason, right? The other problem that I think we've got right now is, I don't know, I feel like we've got some really good bottom actions that this, like, I'm looking for top actions right now almost, you know? I guess this is either or, but... You know, bottom, bottom, top, top, and top or bottom. 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 I mean, it is good. It's just, I guess, not, not like inspiring me at all right now. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to something hopefully a bit more exciting. Spike Knuckles, attack two, wound, add plus one attack and gain one XP if the target is shackled. Lovely, there you go. Ooh, and then if we've already got the other shackle up, we've got the wound and we've got the shackle wound. That means that they would take two damage at the beginning of their turn. That's pretty good. I'm doing that to like some elite. That's that's good. I mean, attack two wound is very playable anyway. So at level one, that's playable. You, you, you're usually looking at attack three um, with maybe something like push or pull. Or you're looking at something like attack two with something like poison wound. Like that's the kind of level that you usually are at. And uh, this fits right into that. And we get an extra bonus here if they're shackled. So winner. You'd never play attack two wound to be honest. I think it's fine. I think it's okay. Not like crazy inspiring. Maybe if it was a well, maybe if it was ranged, yeah, maybe if it was ranged, like melee melee attack two wound is. If this was like I don't know, range two attack two range two wound, yeah, I think then you'd be like, yeah, this is fine. Even if it was only just range two, just something something like that would be better. A melee attack three with nothing else is very low impact. Yeah, well, you don't. That's why they don't. They or they shouldn't really exist, right? In my opinion, because then you get to a point where it's like you should. You're just using default action, right? The bottom of the economy is always attack two, move two, right? So everything has to be better than that. Like, otherwise, you're just default action guy. <laughs> so I agree that attack three is like without any extras is underwhelming because it doesn't really it's like well it's like a little bit better than my attack too mm -mm -mm. it's very solid at attack three well, yeah yeah if you can get three and then obviously the wound damage hopefully will tick over 66 initiative though means that you'll see you have to pair it with something early but i don't think that's going to be too much of a problem going off of this character I like the way that we've got a lot of, like, ways to just do true damage to, like, characters as well, you know? We've also just got stuff like this, where we can score on 14, heal ourselves for 3, hit this guy, like, if we've already got the shackle out, right? Yeah, it works out pretty well. Hmm. You sure with this initiative this card, it doesn't match how you need to work for it to be attack 3 wound. Well, you can do it with this, right? I'm not sure. I mean, there's nothing like this to me seems like a great opening turn. If you've got boots or enhance this, 18 initiative, move two, shackle something, attack it for three with wound. I mean, that seems like a really good opening turn to me. 
And then from there on, you've got one shackled enemy and you're away, right? Does that not seem like a good opening move to me? Seems pretty good to me. Solid setup, yeah. It, shackled is a weird mechanic in a way because I feel like you have to, maybe we'll have to play with it a little bit to really under, understand it because it's, it's an interesting idea. You know, seeing how enemies actually interact with you and the board and stuff is going to be kind of weird. But basically you lock an enemy down in some way. They kind of have to focus on you. They just sort of sat there like staring at you. Having to, you, you're having to deal with you really. Um... Six, yeah, 66 initiative, not great. Move three, add pierce one to all your attacks targeting shackled enemies this round. That's good. That's good too. Not like, you know, going to um, set the world on fire, but against certain enemies, it's going to be quite good. And um, if you're playing, you know, if you were to maybe, you know, play something like this, which is like multiple attacks... That could work out quite well. I guess what we'd be looking for here is some kind of like ranged attack with this. Some kind of like target three or range, like small ranged attack or something. Target three, attack two or one or two or something. But the pierce, the pierce is only against one, one enemy really. So I guess it's, it is fairly single target based. This character does feel like they are more single target based than most others just because of the mechanic. The mechanic does sort of lend itself to be that way. Yeah, you only get one shackled enemy banker, yeah. So yeah, I've been thinking about it more, really. This enemy is very single target focused. So you just you just want a bunch of like attacks, right? Something like this, really. And just go ham on something. But not a bad way to augment something like... Um, you know, what was the swing with the attack three? Not a bad way to like augment something like this. Make it a little bit better. I guess the problem, the problem with like move plus shackle. Like that's kind of weird, right? Because generally speaking, you want to be adjacent so then, I guess what you move away to do a ranged attack, or you move, or maybe you maybe just want to position yourself slightly differently. I guess I don't know. That's always a bit weird. That's a bit weird to me. Because if the enemy is already shackled, then realistically you want to be next to them because that's where like shackled really works. So where when is the shackled enemy running away from you? You're running away from them. I guess. Melee hatchet. <laughs> yeah. You're not sure a plus one attack would be fine here or not. Traditionally, that's usually a bit much, but it's so single melee focused, you don't know. Yes, I would agree with that. Oh dear. Right. My uh my girlfriend apparently is trapped in her room with a giant spider and I need to go and get the spider. So bear with me chat. What I'll do is I'll stop the recording right now briefly and I'll, I'll start it again for the YouTube people. So <laughs> we'll be going back briefly. Bear with me. Rescue mission success. <laughs> it's, all, it's all done. <laughs> okay. <sighs> right. Right, Spike Knuckles, yes. We're talking about how this is maybe not great because it might just be plus one damage on something. Or maybe not because it might not even have shield. So it's maybe a bit specific. Maybe we need to find something that combos quite well with it. But the top is just good value. So perhaps we'll find like the utility of this might come into play at some point. <clears throat> Remember to hit record again? I did, yep. <laughs> right. Okay. Next card. Moving on. 
Okay, it's got the word stun on it. Wrapped in metal. Stun. Range two. Pull one. Shackle. I mean, that seems pretty good. As far as abilities go, that's pretty good. 82 initiative, though. Kind of stinky. But, oh, I mean, you could maybe go for a late stun. I guess you'd probably just want to use one of your early move cards with this. Yeah, I guess you probably would. <clears throat> You're always leading with the 82. Well, the thing is, the thing with going late, I always find I always find that late late stuns are always just I mean they're they're okay, but the problem is is that of course at that point in time the enemy's already done that turn, and so then you're kind of hedging for what the next turn could be. And the next turn could be something that doesn't matter, right? So you kind of end up stunning them on a, a character or an enemy that's not going to do anything anyway, you know? So, like, usually stun, I like to have as an early initiative so I can go, okay, what's causing me a problem this round? Okay, that's causing me a problem. That I, that I can deal with, that I can't deal with. Okay, let's go stun this because it's a really you know, big play. Um, late stuns are okay, but you're just, you're kind of hedging into the unknown. And for all you know, the enemy could just be sitting there doing nothing, right? Just stun an enemy who always matters. Well, I think every enemy pretty much. There's only a couple of enemies in the game that I can think of that really have like no do nothing cards. Good against demons, I guess, because most of the demons kind of do something. But then even then, some of the demons don't do anything. Like, fire demons sometimes don't do anything. Good against archers, because they attack every turn, regardless. <clears throat> it can also immediately spring a bottom trap. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like that with the move, with something like this. Although, again, that's a little bit like you'd have to be in the right position before it all happened. I don't know. That, to me, seems a little bit awkward. Can we enhance this? No, not enhanceable. So if we can enhance the range and the pull, maybe, I would be like, yeah, okay. Because, like, range two, like, I'm just thinking, like, general scenario starts. I don't know if you're always going to be able to, like, you know, not play a move on the first turn. Like, yeah, you're probably going to need to. I mean, it's, 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 it's excellent. It's a stun. It's excellent. And it shackles. Added bonus there. So a great, like, opening a door type card. You know, run through the door. Stun something. Shackle it. It's all good. Um, so, yeah. It, it, I mean, this kind of thing is always going to be just a sort after effect, right? <clears throat> Yeah, Professor, I think his katana yeah, has explained it to you. But yeah, basically, it's like immobilized. Shackled shackled enemies are kind of immobilized when they're next to you, but not technically immobilized. But in the meaning of the word immobilized, but the function, yeah. <clears throat> mm -mm. Maybe even pull on the door to block it. Yeah, possible. You have to have pretty pinpoint enemy positioning for that, though. But yeah, that kind of thing is possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Top tier. Top, top tier, um... Top tier CC. The bottom, move three, pull three, target one shackled enemy adjacent to the hex you occupied at the start of this action. Okay, so again, similar to the other one, pull an enemy with you. I, I quite like the idea of these. Gives you some fun ways to mess around with traps. Also, you, you could you could trigger the poison trap, right, with this in the first turn. So both this would, would trigger the bottom trap. This would 
trigger the top trap card like in a single turn like so there's a single there's a fairly decent single turn there where you could um you could do that you would have to have them shackled already but you got seems like you've got plenty of good ways to do that so uh, there's definitely some interesting um interactions with traps already <clears throat> would immunity to mobilize give immunity to shackle yes And specifically says on the on the card. Um Yeah, not like see an ability an ability like this, you know, it's it's just so solid. You need abilities like this to play the game, like in my opinion, on higher levels of difficulty at least, anyway. <laughs> you do. So it's just going to make your life so much easier. Sets you up as well. It's nice. So, and this, this bottom actually has some nice play as well with some of the traps and and even even without traps could just have some nice play. So, good good uh, two abilities on this one for sure. Right, X cards, ganging up. Attack two, shackle. Nice. We got a few of these now. We went for a little bit of a at the beginning. There was like hardly any of these shackles. Now we're actually got like a good bunch of them. So maybe we don't have to be so precious. Um, force one adjacent shackled enemies to perform attack two. Targeting an enemy adjacent to it with you controlling the ability. Nice. Okay. Ooh. How do we feel about this one above, let's say, what was it? The attack to do an extra damage one, right? This is probably... Well, if you want to kill stuff quickly, this is probably better. But also could do nothing. You think this guy is 69, so it's nice. <laughs> Was number 69? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Most scenarios you want to go at 80 or later, round one. Yeah, but again, like, uh, see, this is this is difference of play style, I think. Uh, absolutely. Like, yeah, you're, you're, not, you're not wrong. Most scenarios, you're not pressured from turn one. Most scenarios, you will get the opportunity to go late and just let the enemy kind of, you know, let the enemy develop their, their position a bit a lot of the time. But my point is, is that late stuns over the course of an entire scenario require you to be you know to be seeing into the future and most enemies do have turns that don't do anything and so you're kind of stunning something preemptively hoping that it does something and yeah a lot you know a good amount of time it will be doing something so sure it works out but like i would much rather just pair my stuns with low initiative and not have to worry about that and try and be more active rather than you know trying to hope that something like that happens like yeah it's a great turn one play but you know we're not just playing one turn turn <laughs> you know <laughs> like we do have really good initiatives to pair it with so it's fine like at least uh, the good thing about this is it's at least it's made it's gone one way or the other right which is the good part of the card right if this was 50 initiative it'd be really annoying because then you would be forced to make the decision like okay am i pairing with an early card am i pairing with a late card right it becomes awkward the good part about this is it's gone one way which is you know it's gone late rather than early i personally prefer early but it's gone late which means at least you're going to have the flexibility to play it late if you want to without having to commit another card just for initiative to do so it, it allows the flexibility of the card it would be a, it'd be bad if it was at 50 because then it would be like well what do we do you're, you're gonna have to have some hiding i'm just saying that me personally if i've got this in my hand 
I'm probably not playing it on 82 initiative. Just personally, I'm just not going to be. Because if I'm playing the top, because I'm going to go right, I'm going to go after this guy. I'm going to go early. I'm going to stun him. Everybody else, ignore him. Go after somebody else. And that's just the way that I generally like approach scenarios. But yeah, there's going to be times when playing it late will be good. But I really don't like the kind of, you know, putting my faith in that, in that at times. I'd rather just go early and deal with a problem that I have. <clears throat> depends on how big the room is yeah that's true i mean there's plenty of scenarios where enemies do come at you right from the get-go but you know it's it's about it's like personal kind of play style it's good that it's one or the other right it's good that it's late because then at least we have the option of playing it early rather than it being 50 and then us going okay what where how are we playing this card right then you then you're forced to use another card just to make this card work so it does work on its own without you having to commit to, uh, like you could you could for example pair this with you know a 60 initiative you know or a 50 initiative or, or a 40 initiative and you'd be fine you'd be like cool gonna go on 82 i'm gonna go late this round it's fine like rather than it being like 50 and you being like right well i can't pair it with anything that's 40 to 60 because it's just whatever i have no control over my turn <clears throat> okay so um So the top of this card ganging up, I think, is maybe it's a little bit like... I like the fact that it's kind of like it all happens in like one single action, right? You attack something, you shackle them, then that enemy can, can perform an attack too on something else. So I do like that. I think that that's cool. You know, it gives you um, an immediate benefit from the shackle. Obviously, like we were discussing with the other uh, attack that we had, like the attack three bottom... Uh, just getting an enemy to be able to perform this you know you can trigger things like retaliate if they've got innate wound innate poison um innate muddle or anything like that that the enemy might have there's a good way for you to do that but of course if there's no no enemy next to another enemy then it's going to be kind of poor um will probably mean a card like this would be less effective in two player than it is in like in three and four but i still feel like it's still going to have some value in two you just need to pick your spot to play it um yeah so this is 74 initiative on a, an effect like this again it's kind of late it is late it's not like super late but it's, it's late might not be a bad first turn play if we're talking about the whole like go late on the first round not maybe not that bad yeah, i think it's fine Actually, maybe slightly better than than some of the other ones that we had. Might actually be better than some of the other attack shackles. Like in certain situations against certain enemy types, right? Uh, so one adjacent ally may perform attack three. Target a shackled enemy adjacent to you. Again, more, more attacks. I like it. Ganging up. Good name. One just an ally may perform attack. These are always like... So th this is good for late. Because realistically, you just got to like... You know, you say, I'm going to go late, guys. You know, could somebody just end their turn next to me? Sure. Like, or whatever. And then you can kind of... like th These kinds of effects do work well with late initiatives. Because you let your allies do their thing. Then hopefully they get themselves into a good position. Um... Yeah, I, I like it. Or you go like, or you go super early and you just try and, you know, kill something very quick, potentially, with some positioning from the previous round, maybe. This actually works really well with the, um, you know, we were talking about the swing. Where's the swing? Right? 
you could potentially swing an enemy. Like, so you could do this on 30. You could swing an enemy behind you so that it's now, like, adjacent to your ally. You could attack it, and then you could get uh, maybe your ally to attack it as well. Like, that gives you some positioning um, possibilities there, I think. It's more damage. It's, it's situ like, situational. Like, you have to play for it. And, and I like it. I like it when games do that. Like, I like it when... Sorry, characters. I like it when characters do that. When, you know, there's quite a big payoff here, but you're going to have to work for it. It's not just going to be handed to you on a, you know, a silver platter and said, here you go. Here's your, here's your attack three, sir, on the bottom. You're actually going to have to work for it a little bit with your positioning. Good teamwork. Good shackling. You can obviously shackle with a top effect before this happens anyway, so. Um, so I think it's good. <clears throat> the bottom is questionable. The ally would be the primary target of the shackled monster, at least on that initiative. Not if you were to move them, right? Swing them. I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess if you weren't doing that, though, yeah, that's a fair point. Unless, of course, you go, they, they also go, well, fairly late, but then I guess they might, there's the risk that they might go later than you. Yeah, maybe. You got a good point there. Interesting idea. I feel like it's, it's, you know, maybe a bit of a risk, maybe a bit hard to set up at times, but it, the reward is there. This is, this is a really good X card, I think. This would be one I'd be looking to include for sure. You like planning for good rewards? Yeah, me too. I, I think it's a, it's a really nice mechanic. You have stuff like that. Right, loot one. Oof. Roundhouse swing. Loot one. You may forego the loot ability, perform shackle, and swing three. Range three. Loot. Each hex target enters. What? Okay. So, it's a loot one, but we could give up that loot one to do a shackle and swing the target but still looting the hex that each one that he swings through this would be a good way to set this up right on a late initiative again i mean it's feels maybe a bit bad that you're playing like a 79 and a 74 together but seems quite good Funniest loot ever. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a weird, thematically weird, like, so he's like collecting the loot for you or he's becoming like a bit of a loot pinata, I guess. Might be one of the best sort of like usable loot actions though. <laughs> actually, actually usable loot action. What? Hmm, interesting. Swing three, so you don't cover the entire area of loot one, you don't think? No, but like loot one is usually not like loot one will hopefully get you maybe like two to three pieces of gold, you'd hope. So, I mean, this would probably only get you two, so it might be like one gold less than a loot one. Maybe. I can't see like a loot one. Unless it's like perfect and everybody died around you. I guess there's a there's a situation where this character does get kind of surrounded, maybe. So maybe a loot one could be more than three. <laughs> Funny part is if you have the choke point when enemies are dying in, swing a new enemy into the grinder. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. This, the top of this just works really well with our trap card that we had. Um, works well with this card. So, I don't know. We've got a lot of shackle now. Shackle seems to be flowing now. So maybe... Maybe we don't need to worry about it so much. The bottom is move three. Add plus two swing to your next swing ability this round. Okay. Hmm. 
swing's an interesting one because... It's going to have to, like, force you to think about the game in a slightly different way. In terms of, like, the movement and stuff. So I don't know how good this really is. Like, swing's going to be more restrictive than push, for example. Like, I can see a situation where, like, a push four could push something four and actually be really good. Um, I mean, a swing like six, um, five here, for example, would be like maybe getting an enemy like all the way around you. But like if an enemy is like, say like a few hexes away, like range three away and you're trying to swing them, are you really going to be able to? Like the width of a tile is not that big. Like what's the widest width maybe on an average tile? Maybe like eight. Whereas like if you can get like a posh six or seven, you can position it to really get them like all the way to the back of the room. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a bit weird here, but I just don't like I can't see a situation when like swing has got to eventually like cap at its usefulness, right? Like there's a point in time where swings just like whatever. Like at this point, I, you know, swing five is as good as swing 10, right? And it's never going to be any better. Never going to need it. Like, it's it's useless. Because there's only so far it can go. If it makes you spring a trap, then it was worth. But could you have not... Like, on an average scenario... It, this is why it's really difficult to say, right? Yeah, if it was spring a trap, it's worth. But... Like... Could a swing three do that, though? That's, that's the thing. I would have to play a scenario... And I would have to see a situation... In which... I see something that swing five could do that swing three and swing three couldn't do. And in that situation, it would be great. Because you could always just try and position yourself slightly differently for the next round. So the enemy moves towards you or, you know, potentially that with their own movement, they get close to the trap. And then on the next turn, you swing them, right? Like, do you know what I mean? Like you don't, I guess, jumping through loads of hoops just to get like a huge swing. I, I, don't, I don't know. Like it's, to me, it seems a bit much. <clears throat> you can swing an enemy adjacent to you so that it goes through the hazardous terrain multiple times. Um, but you have to go all in one direction, right? So... What? You're in the middle and you're surrounded by, what, six enemies? So, I mean, you can't... Well, sorry, six hexes, Right? Like, it's... Yeah, I don't know. Like, to me, this just seems... This seems very much, like, over the top. There might be some situations where it's useful. Seems over the top to me. You feel like needing the two cards, particularly if the top action has a bad initiative for plus two swing, wouldn't be worth it. If enough cases just by using the bot. Because if you're using the top, it's an option. Maybe if you're playing, the, like, if this if this character has, like, obviously has, like, some sort of trap, some trap build and functionality there, maybe with traps and stuff, you start to value swing a lot more. I don't know. But swing is very restrictive compared to push and pull, which to me means that just adding move does not make it better. Like, sorry, just adding plus to it does not necessarily make it better. Like... Like, in the same conventional way that I can say, oh, yeah, push, you know, push three, you know, push four is better than push three. Yeah. Is swing four better than swing three? I mean, technically, the number is higher, but will it, will I ever really get to use it? That extra one? 
or do we just find that in most scenarios three is enough like to position or you know before they get stuck or for whatever reason because push you can maneuver people around obstacles you can't maneuver people around obstacles with swing yeah um this is going to be shocking to everybody but this is a loot card and i don't like it <laughs> um next card vigorous sway shackle and swing three range two if you cannot swing the target into a hex because of an obstacle or wall end the movement the target suffers two damage and you gain one xp shackle swing three range two you cannot swing the target into a hex because of an obstacle or wall Ooh, we got some crack heart action here. Okay. This is good, though. So, I mean... Uh, maybe. It's range two, though, so... This seems good, though. It's like, it's like heaving swing. This is what you were hoping for, swinging people into walls to hurt them, yeah. Yeah, I like this. And the good thing here is it's obstacle or wall, which, you know, walls, quite simple to, to use walls to your advantage. This is where, like, the crack heart was only obstacles with heaving swing, so it was always a little bit tricky. Obviously, heaving swing was an attack as well on top. But, I mean, if you can shackle something, swing them do two damage to them at the same time like true damage as well guaranteed you know against some sort of really annoying enemy i mean that that feels like a good action to me there he is and to be fair even if even if you don't trigger this if you just swing somebody into a trap it's probably okay there might be situations like that too Yeah, if there's a trap on the way to the wall, Albin. Yeah, even better. Exactly. Like, in fact, yeah, if you, you don't even need the trap there, but the trap too, extra, extra gravy on top. So this, this is, this is good. Might be a little bit scenario based, you know, you could say this might be one of those types of, I mean, it's an X card, right? This might be the kind of card that if you were to look at the layout for the scenario and it was just one giant open room with barely any obstacles in it, and you're thinking... Am I, am I really going to be fighting around the outskirts of this building? Maybe not. Like, there's... You know, there are some scenarios where this card could feel underwhelming. But I feel like on, on an average scenario, it's probably going to be pretty good. Pretty happy with it. <clears throat> Works against flying enemies, so it's better than trap swings. Yeah. Always good to kill uh, flying enemies and things with shield. Flying enemies with shield in particular. <laughs> and not trigger their retaliate. Flame demons looking at you. So 52 initiative. Like, nah, it's not great. You know, you'd have to pair it with something not usable at all. Move three. Shackle one adjacent enemy. Create three damage stun trap in an adjacent empty hex. Okay. Hmm. So, depending on, like, this feels like the kind of thing where if the board position was very tight, this could be quite an explosive turn. But, it, but you know, on, on average, it feels quite weak. But it feels like you could have a fairly explosive turn if the board positioning in the state was in a good way with this, you know? Quite situational. What do we think?
I mean, if an enemy walks into it on their turn, it's a two-round stun. At least you can immediately swing it. That's true. You could immediately trigger it if you wanted to. Or you could just invite somebody to, like, jump in. Hmm... It's not a it's not a great burn, I'll say that. I, I don't think it's a great burn. Situational could get you out of a bind. Could be quite good. Hmm. This card's looking I think the value of this card's gone down a fair bit in my eyes now, really, because like you've got a top action here that's good, but maybe not one that's gonna always shine every single you know scenario or every single turn. It's not it's a card that you're gonna look down in your hand and just Sometimes you're just going to be like, oh, man, this doesn't do anything. You know, it just doesn't help. Um, but there'll be other times when it feels really good. So in a situation like that, you kind of need to have a bottom action or an initiative that will at least kind of make the card okay. And I, and I don't think this is it. You know, you've got, a, you've got something here like, it's like, well... It, would I play a card that just said Shackle? And that was it. Just Shackle, range two. Nothing else. No. So. Hmm. Interesting one. I don't know. This card, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm not so keen. But this has some... If you're going for the trap synergy, then this is obviously very good for traps. So, really trigger traps hopefully quite quickly oh that's it that's the last x card well i feel like that's pretty representative of what x cards should be situational seems like a panic burn than a more proactive burn i agree with you on that one for sure right perks time then i guess so with perks we know we're a fairly we, we're attacking quite a bit we know that we are a frontliner. So there are certain like perks, of course, we're going to be looking out for. And I'm spying one already down the bottom here. But let's uh, let's go through the perks and see what it is that we get. So replace one minus one with one plus one shackle card. Nice. Um, kind of interesting. I didn't really think about shackles jumping around as much as they are. But is this... um? Is this mandatory? Do we know? So let's say I was attacking something that wasn't shackled. And I had a shackle on something else. Is this mandatory? I would presume it kind of is. It kind of implies it would be. It's a mandatory quest. Nice. He said the words. You said it, not me. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge damage swing. You know, it's a, it's a two damage swing. So, of course, you're gonna you're gonna take this. It's gonna be a very early perk you're gonna take because it's just an immediate improvement. Just wondering if maybe the shackle, you know, if it's mandatory, could possibly screw you over a little bit, but. Not sure, but it's hard to imagine there are many scenarios where you're choosing not to attack a shackled enemy. I think there's a... F yeah, that's fair. I mean, the shackled enemy is generally your focus most of the time. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty fair. You get bonuses for doing it and what have you. You think you're going to plan out your shackles so a random one in your mod deck feels odd? Also, yeah, no clue if it's mandatory. You can choose not to shackle, just like choosing to not push and pull. I, I don't know. I mean, I would presume so, but then... Yeah, maybe you could just decline the shackle if you really wanted to do it. With it being a unique mechanic, you think it would be mandatory? It's not an effect, is it? Well, I mean, is it an effect? I don't know. 
I don't know. Anyway, that's probably a little bit of a marginal potential issue. Probably isn't going to come into play. Probably not going to be a problem. <clears throat> you doubt Spanji because you can skip just about anything on attack modifiers, even elements. Well, digital doesn't let you do that, but maybe that's wrong. Thematically, maybe the act of shackling is what gives you the plus one. Yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of like where I guess my thematic head would be at, but that's just plus one with the shackle effect. Yeah. Digital doesn't let you make a lot of choices. True, but I've always, I've surprised with the, um, I'm surprised with the element generation. I've always thought that was mandatory, personally. Maybe I've just played too much digital now. And I've just got used to it being that way. But I've never, never figured that with elements, to be honest. Because there's a lot of situations like, you know, you, you draw the plus two fire or whatever. And then, you know, it empowers the enemy's turn, which just kind of sucks. It's just the way you have to deal with it. <clears throat> Hey, BG, you played it with it not being mandatory. I think that's fair. If that's the case and you play it like that way, then it's, it's no downside. So it's it's very strong perk. Um, next one is replace one minus one card with one plus zero or plus two if the target is shackled. Nice. Okay. Yeah. This one's very good. Very good. Hmm. Interesting if you go for the one above first or the one like this one or this one first. I guess if the idea is, is that we're always timing our shackles, like we're playing shackles through our cards. You know, we're not we're not trying to like opportunistically hit a shackle on an attack modifier. Then this one would probably be better if you're trying to just focus the shackled enemy. This one could give you some general flexibility, though. I mean, it might, like, generally speaking, what I, I, I generally like to go for the stuff that just gives you the safer perk first. And, you know, this is the safer perk because, hey, you, it's a plus one regardless of what you're attacking. And maybe you can shackle something. So that's fine. You know, that's, that's a known quantity. This is a bit like, well... You might not draw it at the right time, might not be on the right enemy, blah, 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 you know, whatever. I know that you're generally always attacking the shackled enemy, but it's just one of those things where I'm sort of, I'm drawn to the safety of this perk. But it could well be that this is actually better just because of how you play the character. <clears throat> you're going to skip the first and take the second? Hmm. Everyone loves the damage swing of one plus sometimes the three as a perk on any class possible, yeah. Well, a lot of you guys want to seems like you want to be able to skip the skip the first and go for the second. Well, I respect that. I respect that. You're going for the big damage. Um replace two plus zero cards with one rolling shield one self card. Nice. I do feel like a little bit of this is gonna be quite useful for this character. Just you know, we, we so far we've seen like one card with the word shield on it, and it was a, a top action and you know, take up our whole turn. Didn't feel like it would be a super great sort of action or turn for us to take. So um certainly we didn't get any bottom shield actions, which is like really well, what why would be more valuable because we can stay on one spot. So this seems pretty good. You know, thinning your deck a little bit too. Thinning your deck, adding in something that's actually like useful. I think it's I think it's okay. <clears throat> right, add to rolling retaliate one self cards. Not a fan of that, if I'm honest. 
I mean, it could come into play, right? But I just, yeah. As an early perk, no. Not as an early perk at all. Um, add three, swing three cards. Again, not particularly keen on this because... Well, I suppose it could give you some play. But again, like I just don't feel like they're quite as good as push-pull. What's an interesting thing to think about, though, is like... A rolling pull or a rolling push. I think a, a, maybe a worse than a rolling swing. Because at least with a rolling swing, you might be like, okay, well, I can move the enemy over into this direction, which might be more beneficial for your team. Or maybe you're more likely to have that lateral kind of into a, into a trap or something. Like, opportunistic swing might be a little bit better than opportunistic push and pull, if that makes sense. Because if there's an enemy and there's a trap, like, right behind them, you're like, right, I need to go and push them in. Like, I don't know. Unless, of course, you're playing someone like Krakar, who, you know, wants to just shove people into walls constantly. Hmm. It's an interesting idea. I think swing might be a bit better than push and pull. That's just a random effect that you can sometimes get. <clears throat> hmm. Jury's not out on that one. Could swing a scenario in your favor. I see what you did there. Nice. Okay, replace one plus one card with one plus two wound card. Excellent. It mostly feels a little bit b bad to be taking away a, a plus one, but this is... Should be a damage increase of at least two. One from here and one from the wound. So that's just straight up easy damage increase. Add one plus one disarm if the target is shackled. Um, We're not doing any removal. So this would be adding a card, I guess, to the deck. Not bad. I mean, if you draw this, you're probably fairly happy. But again, would you rather not draw something like a big plus two wound or something rather than the plus one disarm? I don't know. Hmm. If this was replacing something, I think I'd be more keen on it. But just adding one. It's good for sure. Like drawing a disarm or a stun is always good like when you... Like it could... Well, it's... Mm. I'm just trying to think about advantage and ambiguity on this character too. I mean, advantage isn't really a big thing so far. Feels like having a lot of ambiguity on this character potentially with lots of like, you know, this plus this and I don't know. <clears throat> mm. <laughs> Oh, rents with the challenge. Create a quest points reward with me saying no when it's redeemed. That way we can play it when you play the game of reviewing classes, retaliate and heal tops. <laughs> I will see what I can do. I will see what I can do. Okay, so yeah, that was that bug's um that bug's kind of okay. Add one plus one, create a two damage trap and an empty hex within range two card. That's kind of cool. That's free trap. Going to be good with swing. Going to also just be... Um, be good at maybe controlling enemies' movement a little bit as well. You know, and it might just force... An enemy might just have to walk through it. That's okay. I like it's an added effect. Do I like it more than Disarm? I think I probably do like it more than Disarm. Like it's just something that happens, you know? This looks like the only class that doesn't remove negative scenario effects. Gotta roll with the punches. <laughs> We're gonna have to roll with the punches. Alright, next one. 
Add two rolling heal one self cards. Hmm. I mean, it's a rolling, so it kind of doesn't really add to the size of our deck, which is nice. Um, we're going to need a bit of heal here and there. So it's like just sort of added value, a little bit of heal as we go. That's damage we're doing, damage as we go. I think it's fine. It's okay. Is swing up to the full amount? Up to, yeah. Up to. I think this this I think doesn't Crimson Scales just use the new push pull rules anyway, which is up to with both push push and pull as well. I think he might do. Add one plus two shackle card. Hmm. Not amazing. Is this the first time we've had disarm and create a trap in the modifier deck? Def probably the first time create a trap. Disarm, I don't know. We've had stun. I'm inclined to think that we've probably also had disarm. I mean, I can't pinpoint it right now. A mm -mm -mm. uh, new, new. The rule book tells you to use whatever Frosthaven rule changes you want. Yeah. And I, I think that that's a really good rule anyway. The up two rules are... Should be the way it is, really. Shouldn't be forced to have to use it makes the effect like sometimes just undesirable especially pull it's just hosed pull um and then the last ignore negative item effects and remove one plus zero card okay so we can't get rid of our minus two and minus two is just going to be stinky and hanging out in there Overall perks then, chat. What do we feel? Overall, I think this these perks are like are decent. I don't get the feeling that we're like some kind of incredible machine, but I also feel like we can reliably we can reliably draw like a plus one and quite often a plus two once we get things going. does feel that way so like attack threes could you know grow to be attack fives seems quite good a new new hey brother <clears throat> a lot of a lot of so so rolling and that good old minus two still there reminding you of the buddy the brute yeah you're not sold on Shackle on the attack modifier. I feel like, yeah, maybe you could just take that card away and just be replaced one minus one with one plus one. You know, Shackle there is a bit like... They've just chucked it on there because they wanted to put something to do with the character in it. That's my feeling with that. But you're happy that you're just drawing plus one, right? Instead of your minus one. Okay, let's go up to levels. Level two. Agonizing Clamp. Shackle, one adjacent enemy. Attack four, target one adjacent shackled enemy. Interesting. See the way that this is worded as well? Makes you feel like there might be... Uh, cards that can let shackle more than one person coming up but shackle then just do an attack four on them solid very solid very very solid i like this i like this a lot just attack four maybe a bit vanilla but 
it's basically an upgraded version of or ganging up uh, not that one where are you this one it's like an upgraded version of locking links like i feel like at this point in time you'd probably just drop locking links or at least the top maybe you keep it for the bottom because this to me was like this seems quite good actually i was really excited about this to begin with but ultimately if i can attack for four that's two turns of this and hopefully we can kill the enemy within that amount of time so it doesn't really matter about the extra damage like this will be better in theory against a boss but against like an average in an average scenario i don't know maybe we don't want that So 57 initiative, meh, move three, swing three, target one adjacent enemy. Immediate trap usage with the top trap cards. Seems quite good. Bottoms throw them into a trap, yep. Yeah. I still feel like this though is really, really good value though. Shackle attack and then maybe use a bottom shackle effect. You know, you then got something like this. Like, I think the thing with the pro the problem that with the traps is that maybe it'll be a bit too cute. Like we've only really seen one was like great trap, which was that top one that was what a three damage poison one. So I don't know. Like I'm not sold on the traps build yet until we see a card. I don't know, some trap that we can play that's really reliable or, or some way maybe we can make two traps in a turn. That would be incredible. Like if we have a card that puts down two traps rather than just one, we'll see what's coming up. But at the moment, like I'd be inclined to think like, wow, yeah, look, just raw damage. It's great. All right, the second level two is attack three, push three, one XP. You may push the target through hexes occupied by your allies. In each case, the ally may perform an attack to ability targeting that enemy. Whoa, this is weird. Hold up. You may push the target through hexes occupied by your allies. Huh. If they do, the ally gains muddle. Kind of weird. This is an interesting idea. Because you've got like swing, right? Swing could allow you to move an enemy into an interesting place. And probably do this kind of thing fairly easily. And let's say... I mean, I, I feel like although you could in theory get two allies to attack here. It's going to be one ally. So it's an attack three and then they get to perform an attack two. But then they're going to get muddled, which may or may not be a problem for them. <clears throat> it's attack three, push three. Yeah, I mean, attack three, push three is pretty playable on its own. That's fair. It's not quite an attack four, though, which I quite like as well. There's going to be a point where you're going to say, like, what's the balance with this character, you know? When is too many swings, too many swings? When is too many pushes, pulls, you know? Like, there's got to be a point where it's like, yeah, I just don't really need as much as that. I think this is pretty decent. I think that this is, um... If, if you've got an ally who's got a really good attack modifier deck, this could turn into quite a lot more. Or some kind of buff, right? Like Mind Thief. Get the Mind Thief to do an attack too. The Mind's Weakness on there. Attack for four. That was pretty strong. 38 initiative is pretty poor. Mostly unplayable. Move three jump. Shackle one enemy. Move through with the move ability. Okay, this is just like a better version of the move two shackle. Really. <clears throat> <clears throat> mm. 
You might get two if an ally is using summons, but otherwise, yeah, looking like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fairly unlikely. And then if they don't kill them as well, they're kind of like their problem now. <laughs> this is just an upgraded version of the move two shackle, really. Hmm. Difficult choice between these two. I really like the theme of Iron Thrust. It's kind of interesting. Like the potential upside of this seems very nice. Hmm. I don't know. They're very similar cards, I would say, like in terms of like strength. Free shackle. Hmm. I think maybe I'd play with this though, because it'd be maybe a bit more fun. This feels very like just, you know, this is going to be solid. Like, this is like, oh yeah, this is just a solid role player card. Good attack on the top. Decent amount of move with some utility. Solid card. Initiative, rubbish, but whatever. This card, well, this is maybe not quite as good, but in some situations could be much better than this. And this is just move three jump, which, you know, is better than move three, but the swing, maybe not so much. I don't know. Interesting one. My, I'm leaning more towards Iron Thrust for fun purposes. <clears throat> you think you like Clamp a bit more? They're, they're, they're incredibly close. Depends on how important the shackling is, I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> <laughs> boy. A little bit spicy. A little bit spicy. A little bit spicy. Iron Thrust feels slightly weird. Our theme thus far is lock down an enemy and keep it from our allies. Now we're chucking them at our allies. Yeah, I suppose there is. It's fair. That's a fair point. Yeah, so say if you don't kill, if you don't kill this guy that you're doing this on, your allies are probably not going to thank you if they, if they then get hit. Because if they are like long resting, like Pelican says, and then like if they were long resting, you push this through, then. You don't kill them like they miss or something right then suddenly they're on their long rest and they just get hit for a bunch of damage by this guy good for griefing your friends <laughs> good for griefing your friends all down for friendship cards here yeah. tough one at level two i think either of those two are good choices you could probably go for the safe pick or the maybe more fun pick i don't know Right, level three. They chose the long rest, not your problem. <laughs> yeah. Latch and toe. Pull three and shackle range four. If a trap is sprung by the target of the pull ability, the target suffers three damage. Gain muddle and you gain one XP. I mean, this seems like an absolute, like, key card in a trap build, right? I mean, this is just, this is just, this is trap build all over. You even had that card that was, like, the two damage trap bottom. I mean, if you could immediately get them into that, that's five damage and muddle and shackle all in one action. All in one turn, sorry. Not one action, two, two actions, but one turn. That feels strong. It's like a prison warden throwing a prisoner to the other guys. <laughs> yeah, I guess thematically, yeah. Not a previous card, sure. There's your trap value scaling with level mechanic.
Mm. I mean, this is possibly the... This is possibly the best, like, trap enabling card I've ever seen. Like, if you wanted to make traps a thing, well, this is it. This is what it's... This is the kind of thing it has to do. You know, imagine if you have like a sun if you have like the scenario trap, right? So you're playing on like, you know, you're level three, or whatever, you're playing on like, you know, plus, plus one or something. Like so trap damage is like six or something like that. Six plus three that's nine damage plus model and a shackle to get you going and you've got a bottom action potentially like this could be a fantastic opening card in certain scenarios where there's a trap between you and the enemy range four as well is a huge range huge range very cool top yeah absolutely it's arguably oppressive by level four well, i guess we'll have to see what the level four cars are but yeah if we get any kind of like if we get any kind of like low initiative bottom action make a, a good trap like that's usable then this obviously just goes like through the roof value i mean it's already good value with just a little two damage trap and if we get something that's even better yeah, I mean, this will scale very well. It comes nicely with the two damage trap. You'd feel better with maybe one more good trap making bot. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm all aboard with that one too. That's what we that's what we need. We've got this piece. Okay. You know, we, we've got like... 75% of the puzzle. <laughs> Just need that little bit more. Put it over the top. Do you go on 81 then? Because the trap card is 41. Um. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. And then they're shackled up and then you can go early next round and have a really good shackled turn. And just like beat up, beat them up. Yeah, I, I can see that. <clears throat> Super good top. What's this bottom? Pull four. Self towards one enemy. Oh, so it's you're going up the other end of the chain. So it's like you're throwing your chain at somebody, then you're pulling yourself towards them. A bit like the whole grappling hook mechanics from, uh, was it the Bombard? If you end the pull ability adjacent to target, shackle and model. Good movement too. Potentially just a move four with shackle, really. Just a, a more thematic move four. So you can't go through, can't you know, add anything to it. Can't use boots or anything like that, but you know. Okay, I like this card a lot. I think if you're playing traps, then this is a must-have. Like, this feels really powerful. Wait, what's the other level three then? Sweeping collision. Shackle and swing four. Target one adjacent enemy. Attack three. Target the enemy targeted with the swing ability. And one enemy the target moved through. Ah, okay. Shackle somebody, swing them for four. Give them an attack of three. And then attack something else for three. So this could be a six. This could be attack six. That's not bad. 20 initiative two. Hmm. And po possibly this would work better with the, the trap bottom, right? You could play the trap bottom, put a trap next to you swing one enemy through another enemy into your trap then you would attack this like that feels like a really powerful turn it's gonna be interesting to see how the traps like how you kind of use the traps like it feels like 
you wouldn't want to go all in on traps, but you also probably wouldn't want to go all in on just like shackle attacks, you know? It's interesting. <clears throat> Getting a Kratos vibe. It's got that kind of like, he's definitely a big beefy boy swinging, him, swinging himself around, jumping on people. You'd probably want to move bottom for this to get next to two enemies. Well, I mean, you're in a position here where enemies are going to kind of naturally move towards you. And because of the whole shackle mechanic, right? Enemies won't move away from you, or at least one enemy won't, when they come next to you. So, in theory, you can maybe reliably expect that you're going to have one enemy near you at all times. So then it's just the second enemy you need. Interesting. Very interesting idea. Hmm. Man, so far this character's had like a couple of like doozies at level up. Both two and three. Both of these cards so far, they're both tickling my fancy. So what's the bottom on this? It's a burn. Okay, but it looks like it's a permanent effect. You and all allies gain pierce two on all your attacks targeting shackled enemies. While shackled, enemies lose flying. Oh. Oh, why? Oh, they did the dirty, huh? Oh, why? A little bit spicy. Yeah, oh, they done the trap card dirty. This is very strong. Really strong. Like, this is expose, but more enemies have flying than invisibility in the game. So, it's only while they're shackled, though, to be fair. So, it's not like permanently like they lose flying. Not quite as good as that, but like, there's a lot of enemies with flying. A lot of enemies with flying in the game. Has there been another ability in Gloomhaven to remove flying? Yeah, Bone Breaker on the uh, bolt. This is a level three card. <laughs> yeah. Apparently so. So remember, this is only on a very specific enemy. But it makes that like PS1 card look pretty pathetic now, huh? Plus, what you could do is you could just shackle an enemy that you don't care about and you could be, like, working on something else. And then any allies could just destroy it. As someone who plays on a lot of increased difficulty, there's a lot of shields in that. So, yeah. Giving me permanent PS2 at high levels. Like, by the time we start getting to, like, the enemies are starting to get to level 5, 6, and 7. That's basically plus 2 damage. Basically, in a lot of situations. It's just one enemy, but it's like, it's it's the mind's weakness. It's the mind's weakness. It's the mind's weakness, all right? That's what it is. It's the mind's weakness, but your allies also get the benefit. Like, you just nuke certain enemies down very quickly. Then you just shackle another one and go after them. We know how good the mind's weakness was. This is the mind's weakness. <laughs> Just with a bit more going on in a slightly different terminology and a slightly different cost because it's a burn. But still think of all the cards we have left to see in the upgrade path and figure that they got a. Nice to not come back at some point and select this one instead. True. You've got a few different op You might be able to come back and get one of these cards later. Oh, I just feel like they've done... It's it's done the trap kind of build a little bit dirty here. Because you kind of like... You've got a, a card here that's like, oh yeah, this is really cool. Triggering traps. But then you got a card that's like, hey. 
we can trigger traps too. Just in a slightly different way. And oh, this can help you trigger traps on your flying enemies that you've been struggling to do that on. You're like, oh, great. You know, like they're almost two cards that are vying to do very similar things. But in a slightly different way. But the raw power level of this card is higher than this. And it has the better initiative. You you know, it's doing... It's just one of those awkward leveling up decisions where it's like, well, I really want to play with this because this seems like a lot of fun. But this could be two attack threes just on the top. And then this, if we decide to play it at some point, could just trivialize certain enemies. <clears throat> you feel the top is strong enough that you don't feel too bad if the scenario is bad for the bottom effect. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. This is this is the big this is the huge problem. Is that this is like okay, if there's no trap, this this is very underwhelming. Right? Yes, we're going to play with traps. But what I'm saying is like, you know, this on its own, this ability is average. Right? On its own. Like, oh, I need, I need to kill something. Oh. Average. This, at the very worst, is an attack three on 20 initiative. At the very worst. This could be a whole lot of nothing. And that's, I think, the kind of problem. And maybe that's also just like me wanting to always take cards that just are very versatile and effective in every scenario. Whereas this, you know, if a trap build would have to go hard on traps, like that's just all you've got. Interesting. Let, let's have a look at another level up. I mean, I like if we were to just in a vacuum choose between these two cards, I honestly don't think it's close. I think Sweeping Collision is just the better card. But we're not in a vacuum. So we'll see what else we can do. Hey, Camper. How's it going, buddy? You come to Scouts Copy. You should be coming in this week. Just so hyped to try out all of these classes. Awesome, dude. Mine is still trapped somewhere in EU customs purgatory. Um, I don't. I don't even have a tracking email for it yet. I don't think. BG did offer to send me in a, a copy from America, like just so I could get going. But I then end up having to pay customs again. <laughs> so it'd be like me basically double dipping on customs charges. You know, I don't think it would be that great. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stick it out for at least a little bit longer. Hey Hutch, with all official and unofficial content, who would be the best trap lane class to pair with this demo? Mm, Tinker, probably. Tinker. Like, because Tinker's tools just got a strap. A, a, a stun bottom, right? And then it's also got like maybe a poison trap. Has Tinker only got one trap making card or two? You only got Tinker as tools. That's create a stun trap bottom. I mean, Dig Pit. I mean, Dig Pit trap is no joke. And we've messed around with that a lot. You think demo? Mm. But then, no. Well, the thing is, though, is that you say, like, demo, but 
wouldn't it be better for demo just to be running around attacking stuff? Like, I'm thinking, like, roles-wise as well. Like, the thing with Tinkerer is Tinkerer just supports, you know, has a lot of opportunity to just play bottom actions and stuff. Out of the unofficial ones, there was that character. Was it, um... Was it the Artificer? I think the Artificer has a card that allowed them to play, like, three traps or something. The Artificer... Um, I think it was the Artificer. Like, the thing, the thing with Tinkerer is the Tinkerer could just, like, give up the actions. Like, it doesn't really matter for the Tinkerer, but the demo giving up actions to help you be better, not really in the vein of their strengths of their character, in my opinion. There's also, like, a Scoundrel's got one or two, right? One. Tinker is the best because it's not like his actions are valuable anyway. Quote. Well, I'm not wrong. <laughs> Level five to disarm, get scrap traps. There you go. That's the one you want. There you go. Artificer. <clears throat> okay level four then we're expecting okay here we go this is the card okay this is the thing this is this is we'll get to this in a second do the top first but we'll get to this this is this is the thing that this hangs off of dizzying release uh swing six 2 XP seems excessive. Target one shackled enemy. At any point during the ability may perform push three target. At any point. Okay, so we could swing them a little bit, then push them, then keep swinging them. Gives you a bit more. Okay, so th so this means that this swing six might be a little bit more usable. Okay. Gotcha. Attack X, targeting the target of the swing ability, where X is equal to the number of hexes the enemy moved with this action. Okay. So that could be six, seven, eight, nine max, plus maybe that card that gave us an additional plus two. Like, so maybe you're topping out at something like an attack 10 to 12. That could be like the best case scenario. Worst case scenario, this probably ends up being something like, you know, seven. Which is pretty bad value. Nah, not a great bun. Um, not like for a, for a burn, not usually high on that. Mm -mm. It's often attack eight. Yeah, I said like the floor of it would be seven. The floor would be seven. The ceiling would be, you know, 10, 11. Like 11 would be probably the best. I, I don't feel like... I mean, like, we know that, like, that that is value. That is a burn. But it, it's in the same... It's the same effect that I don't like. It's just more words to achieve the same effect that I don't like. If we can swing things through a bunch of traps, yes, that's great. We have lots of abilities that swing things already. So, like, I don't feel like going, like, if we could, we could swing it through a trap too, and then it'd be really good. So, yeah, but we, we have abilities to do that already. So, like, we don't need to tag an attack eight onto it. Yes, it can execute an enemy very quickly, but it doesn't guarantee the kill. So, like, burn executes were generally not very good. Case in point. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
It wouldn't be a dizzy release if you didn't have to get dizzy reading the amount of words on the card. <laughs> right. Fair point. Right, anyway, this is why we really want this is what we really came for. This is the main attraction down here. 24 initiative, nice, good. Create a three damage wound trap in an adjacent empty hex. If the trap is sprung by a shackled enemy, remove shackle from the enemy, discard this card, and it suffers one additional damage. Okay, here it is. So we pull an enemy and we shackle them at the same time. So they are definitely shackled. Range four. So it's going to be three damage. Six damage. Plus a wound. Plus one additional damage. Seven damage. Plus wound. Eight damage. We have the flexibility of going on 24. Or what was it? 81. So we can go. We can go nice. We can go early 24. Or early-ish 24. We can go late 81. Good flexibility with the two card combo. You know, maybe you'd like the 24 to be a little bit lower, but it's fine. It's usable. Same with the 81. Maybe if it was a little bit later, but, you know, this gives us the flexibility of, of performing this action late or early, and it's very, very strong. So, I mean, name a more iconic duo. And to XP. Yeah. <laughs> but then they lose the shackle. It's fine. You just draw it from your attack modifier deck, right? <laughs> That's what the attack modifiers are for. Now that's really that's really cool, really really cool. One one thing, I, I think I don't know, is this is just maybe we talked a little bit about this before. Um, we talked we talked a little bit about this before. I think last last week, or maybe the week before, where we were talking about the order in which people pick cards and how they pick cards, right? And about how the most people the first time they play. Like a character, they'll probably just feel things out as they level up. And, you know, they'll look at the two cards and they'll choose. Like not everybody has a grand build plan. So like my my personal feeling here would honestly be to swap maybe this and this. Like so this is actually level four and this is level three. Because like it's a bit weird to pick a card to be like, it's good, but next level it's going to be great. Like, it's kind of like, and then you're like, well, how many games have you got to play to get to level four? Well, I got to play like, you know, I got to play like four scenarios or whatever. And, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe that's just my personal feel. Like, I feel like when you put, like, you know, we said this before, you put two really strong abilities next to each other. Um, Sorry, you put like two abilities next to each other that, well, they're kind of comparable in some ways, but ultimately this does seem stronger on the surface and it's a lower initiative and it's got a really cool burn ability on the bottom that could be really good it becomes really hard to be like oh pick this card you know i mean if you come in at prosperity level four or above then it's not a problem which m might happen i guess um but not with crimson scales it won't um <clears throat> Do you fair think you were taking latch and turf? You wanted to pull people into traps. I don't. I. I don't think that's such an, an easy argument. I honestly don't think it is because this kind of does that a little bit. You just need to position yourself. Like I could justify that swing four could also be used as a very effective way of activating traps, especially if I'm the one placing them because I'm controlling where they're being placed. This is better at triggering traps inside the scenario, absolutely. But when you're talking about me playing a bottom action to play a trap, like, I, I could just place it next to me and swing this guy straight into it, right? Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it's, if you're, if you're talking about like scenario based ones, yeah, of course, because you don't know where they're going to be, you don't know where the enemy is, sure. But I feel like you can use this as an effective tool to trigger your own traps. <clears throat> it's more used with traps that signaled at least to me yeah 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 it does it does 
And, and like I said, I said before, like one of the disadvantage of the Gloomhaven system is, is that the only having two cards, you know, when you want to try and make a build for a character, it's really hard because it's like, well, I want to make a build for a character. What order do you allow people to unlock those cards without making it so that, well, that build doesn't become good until you get to this point, right? Like if someone says, oh, I really want to play a trap build on this character. You know, you might struggle. You're going to struggle maybe for the first four levels or three to four levels to be like, yeah, it's we can make, we can, stuff's happening, but it doesn't feel super good. You know, you've had to make, you know, three level up decisions where you're, you're you've maybe, sorry, not three, two level up decisions where maybe, uh, maybe you could have taken slightly different cards, gone down a different route. And then it's, it's, it's just difficult. And, and that's not, I said, that's, in my opinion, that's not a, a knock against character design. That's a knock against game design. You know, Gloomhaven's good because there's limits in some ways, but in other ways it's bad because that really, I think when we look at characters and we're like, oh, you can play this build or this build, quite often one of those builds will be suboptimal for quite a while. Like, and sometimes if that's lower levels, that's a problem because people will start building their character to try and feel strong. Like, I don't like the Scoundrel ranged build because it takes so long to come online that by that point, what's what's the point? <laughs> you just play... Play an, uh, play an, uh, an okay, you just play the standard build, you know? It becomes like maybe your second playthrough build or a high prosperity build, which I think we can't really take for granted that everybody is going to do that or a lot of people will do that, you know? <laughs> if only we could just mash two cards to go into some sort of double-sided cards. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what would happen if somebody did that in a game, huh? Although, to be fair, you've only got, you got one. No, 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 you've got two abilities on both sides. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it is a limit. It's, in my, it's a limiting factor which makes character design interesting and a challenge. Um, and it's always hard to say what to say. Like, but it's like a character like this, I felt like it, it, it'd just be really interesting to know how people approach it. Because like, I don't know. I don't have the answer. I'm just saying like when we when we talk about it, a lot of people in chat seem to be like in the same kind of play style as me, which is like, generally speaking, they don't think too far ahead on what their character gets. Maybe a little bit. You understand the sub themes of your character. Um, and then when you come to leveling up, you just kind of look at the cards, you assess them. What are the needs of the party? What do I enjoy doing? This card seems strong. And then you kind of take that card. And then, you know, by the time you get to like level three, level four, you're kind of compounding already on your build decisions. So... You know, at that point in time, it's hard to like, it's like the sunk cost fallacy, right? People aren't going to suddenly go, oh, well, I'm going to change my build like halfway through, right? And, and it's a limiting factor with the game system because if Gloomhaven just said to you, do you know what, guys? You can pay 100 gold or 50 gold and you can respec at any point. You can just respec. And that was actually a baked in rule into the, uh, into the game. Then I think that problem is, again starts to go away because you could say, what you should do is for the early game, you should play this build until you hit level five, take this card, pay 50 gold, get the respec, go back and take these cards. And you've just breathed a whole lot of fresh life into your character. Like, whoa, I'm now playing a different character for the next five levels, right? Almost. That's kind of a cool idea. So it's a bit frustrating that that kind of thing isn't like the done thing. It's like, no, you kind of have to replay the game all the way through and deal with that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Frost is adding an official variant to be spent by paying gold. It's kind of expensive though. I think it's fine. You, you just you want to make it expensive enough that you you maybe do it once or twice on your character. The thing is that I think a lot of people will just house rule it anyway and just do it anyway. But I think just having an official rule there is good. Like, the thing is that if they say, okay, it costs 200 gold, most people will go, oh, that's too much money. Let's house rule it and let's make it 50 gold. <laughs> you know, that's like, you know. People are going to play the game how they want to play the game anyway. <laughs> you house rule that you can respect for free if you haven't played that character for very long. 
what what we did is we did something similar we basically said you know you can kind of play um you can kind of play like a couple of scenarios to get you get the feeling of the character down and then if you needed or wanted to make any changes up to that point in time um we'll kind of like we'll just like hand wave it and say it's okay like you know if you wanted to play a couple of scenarios just to see how the character felt and then be like oh actually guys you know i think i made a mistake here i think i should have taken the other card or i really want to play this way or i've read a guide now and i want to do this like because a couple of the guys did read guides um i think i might have read one or two guides at the time for a couple of characters that i was playing probably gripes guides most likely um because there weren't that many guides online originally gripes was basically just like the the only the only like guides that were available there were other guides but gripes were just so well laid out so that was a, a little bit of that for sure <clears throat> you just need to do buy honor respect but don't abuse it what size is it gonna do break it to your heart yeah exactly i mean board games are me they're meant to be fun that's the beauty of a board game is you can just change the rules a little bit to make it a bit more fun for you if you want to Hey, Dion. Good to see you, buddy. So anyway, kind of mini ran over again <laughs> with this kind of stuff. It's not that it's not class designer's fault. It's the game's fault, in my opinion. I think it, the game is sometimes too inflexible with certain things that l makes it very tough for you to get this right because who knows maybe maybe this is the correct way of doing it you know having it this one second or not but like i think this is very cool and if you took this card you'd be laughing now like it's it's gonna be a lot of fun like a lot of fun um cool right other level four double ko <clears throat> hey ronnie good to see you buddy welcome hope you're doing well uh, so attack four, if this attacks, attack four, if this attacks, I think there's an S there, an extra S, kills the target, perform attack four, and is that, is that an enhancement dot? That's weird. So attack four, if this attack kills the target, perform another attack four and gain an XP. So possibly... Attack eight. Otherwise, just kind of attack four. Um. I mean, of course, if you do this and you get the second attack four, that feels pretty good. But if you don't, it's significantly underwhelming. Like, why well, you drew that minus two? Oh, that, that, that pesky minus two, right? I feel like you'd probably want to attack something that's on like three health with this. <laughs> Just to be like, it's going to die. I'm going to kill it. Then you still draw your minus two. Damn it. <laughs> but something like that. Oof. Hey, Ronnie, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the quest. Hope you're doing well. What do I think about Jaws of the Lion? I love Jaws of the Lion. Jaws of the Lion, um, in my opinion, is probably the best, the best Gloomhaven product. Apart from digital. Digital is probably the best Gloomhaven. Like, but in terms of like, you know, content, I think it is the best. For, for price point, teaching the game, good characters, fun story kind of hits all of the high points obviously gloomhaven goes into a lot more depth and has a lot more replayability and lots of things to dabble with but i think like jaws of the lion's like this the perfect entry a entryway into it and it's just such a well-made product <clears throat> the best gloomhaven product so far true i feel like digital has now passed that in terms of like what it can offer you um because it just combines both of them if you buy the dlc for much less than either so 
but uh yeah if you have to buy like the board game <clears throat> There's literally no reason to buy base command before Jaws if you knew. Yeah, totally agree. You get a great, you get four great characters that you could use in your base game as well if you wanted to, and they're they're great. Really, all of them are great, and you get a good way to learn the game. You get a good narrative experience. It doesn't take up a huge amount of space. You can just about see my copy there. Just up there. There's like a huge amount of space over there, and um, it's kind of competitively priced, you know, for a modern board game. It's the right, the right kind of price for a modern board game. <clears throat> but Jaws the sour cookie table is going to take it down a notch. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Jaws was awesome. You hope future mini campaigns come out like that with a tight snow and a pie design for it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've spoken to Nitz about that. I think he's working on something to that kind of effect, like a community like a fan-made kind of version of that. I, I like the idea of there being like, okay, there's four characters. They work really well together. The scenarios really complement their skills as well. And it's more of a curated experience and you go through it and there's just less jank. Because obviously like the problem with Gloomhaven is you start pulling characters from all over the place with different abilities mixing together and it can get quite janky at times or can break quite easily. Whereas I feel like you can kind of curate a good experience and tell a really interesting story in that time as well. <clears throat> you like the tiles on the campaign book? It's a good idea. Yeah, the campaign book as well is really clever, really good idea. I don't know about that for Frosthaven, though. I know they're going to do an optional one, but personally, I feel like for that kind of game, I'm okay with it. Like, tiles. I think. Okay, anyway. So, back to back to Crimson Scales. Double KO. I feel like this attack is... <sighs> yeah, fairly, un fairly underwhelming if it's only an attack or if obviously you get two attacks off it could be quite good so decent ceiling decent ceiling average floor um 92 initiative allows you to go really late so i guess you could wait for your allies to hopefully like get close to killing some people then you could run in late and maybe kill them very very late initiative latest initiative i think we've had so that's something yeah not 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 massive. All right, move three. Double the value of your next attack. Two XP, burn. Single charge there because it will stay out until we do the next attack. Oh, it's, a, it's a boss killer. It's a boss killer. You know, hatchet, double throw was playable. And maybe with a couple... We've got a couple of like big burns, right? That could just... Like we had that gang up and stuff like that. So we do potentially have, you know, attacks that could be as high as like 10, 8, 10, you know, doubled to like attack 20. Like it wouldn't be beyond the realms for this character to, to really do some insane huge attack. <clears throat> You had to pick this card because of your personal quest. Or was it like kill uh, kill elites or something? Kill something? Or do a specific amount of damage? <clears throat> Better do that advantage. Yes. Imagine the imagine flipping your miss on, on this. Because it's a double burn, essentially. You would have to move three. Burn this to double the value of your next attack. And then you do the attack. And it's... Oh. The double burn for nothing. Well, for a move three. <laughs> Not worth it. Not worth it. Hey, Trevmeister. 
How's it going? Came over from watching my YouTube. Well, welcome to the live stream. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Good to have you here with us. <clears throat> it's fine. You'll draw miss and curse with advantage. <laughs> okay. Well... Hmm. This is just incredibly good value, I think, right? I mean, it's really good. If we want to make traps good, I mean, you have to go for this. This is kind of boring. Not a bad card, just kind of boring. So let's say we took... Let's say we took Sweeping Collision. We were like, nah, you know what? Latch and throw. We took Sweeping Collision instead. Let's go out on a limb and Yo. say that. Yo. Hey, Zupa. Thanks so much for the reset, buddy. Eight months. The quest continues, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a great week, bud. So if we took this sweeping collision, right? Instead. So we did let's say we didn't have the pull. We didn't have the pull. Would we be better off getting this or getting this? Honestly, I would be leaning towards still getting this. Because with swing like 20 and even like these two cards together actually are pretty good. Right? Just, we could just go, okay. I mean, yeah, sure. It's a little bit of inefficiency because you're using like, you know, two similar initiatives to achieve the same thing. I never like doing that. It always feels a bit weird when you play like a 20 and a 24 together or you know, two early cards together. But just sometimes, you know, if this character ends up leaning a bit more towards the early initiatives, then it happens. So you could go create this. Um, where are you? Shackle, swing him in. Takes the damage, right? So that would be three damage from the trap, plus one from the shackle, plus... The wound. So that would be like, what? Three. Three plus one, four plus one minute. So maybe like about five damage. Then we would get to do an attack three against it. And then maybe another attack three against somebody else. That's eight damage. That's eight damage and then maybe even more. Right? I mean... Seems pretty good. Note that we don't have to target anything with Shackle here. This just says target the enemy targeted with the swing. Doesn't matter that the Shackle fell off. <clears throat> You're doing great. My guides are very helpful. Awesome, dude. Well, thank you so much for um, tuning in live. I appreciate it. Four damage and wound is just a lot of damage for a bomb, like a worryingly high amount. Yeah. But what I'm like, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, what I'm driving at a little bit here is that I know that this is really cool and very easy for it to combo off together. But honestly, if we want to play like efficient, really efficient high stakes Gloomhaven, like, I mean, this is pretty good. The only thing about this is that obviously... You kind of have to do a bit of setup before it, right? The good thing about this is that it's it, it, it's going to work. Like, you don't have to do anything. You literally just play these two cards together. It works. And it's good. Whereas with the other one, well, yeah, you're going to have to get the enemy next to you first. You know, you're going to have to move. Like, you're not going to play it on the first turn of the game. It's going to be maybe something you play the second turn, third turn, something like that. You need to set it up a bit more. So it's not, like, just going to happen. Whereas the other one is just going to be very simple. Just bang, bang. Done. So Latch and Toe is very clean. 
very very clean um isn't the be all end all though <clears throat> you're gonna take dizzy release no matter what your level three card was yeah i believe so i think so too With the modified deck this has, you'll take the seven damage wound guaranteed over the attack four, maybe another attack four with a risky bottom burn. I think I think the thing with this is this is like I think as Nit said, it's it's worryingly high. Like for a bottom action, this is very, very good. What's interesting as well is in theory, if you wanted to, you could play this, create a three damage wound trap in, a, in an empty hex. Then you could put this into your active area, gain one XP and then immediately discard it. So you just, you know, like if you didn't, if you wanted to cycle this card for whatever reason, like you don't, you create the trap regardless. Then you can just remove this. Like this is not part of the trap being on the board. So you could just get rid of it. Make another trap again. <clears throat> this is, in my opinion, the fairly, fairly easy pick between the two. Because I feel like this works with everything that we've potentially got. This is a bit risky. I mean, unless, of course, you're looking for a really, really late initiative. I guess that's it's got, got that going for it. You wish Chain Guard was an 11 card class because they have a lot of fun persistence, but you never can never commit to them. Hmm. Yeah. Would be fun to play with this. I mean, yeah, 11 cards. I mean, we can afford to maybe burn one, but yeah, I see your point. Okay. Level five then. I feel like we know that dizzying release bottom is just the bomb. Is the nuts. As they say. Um, level five. Impending power. Oh god. On the next five attacks targeting you this round. Gain shield two or retaliate one for the attack. At the end of the round perform a heal X self. Where X is equal to the number of untriggered spaces. What? That is crazy. That is like the most crazy card I've ever seen. It's a non-burn. Great tanking card. That might be, it might be the best tank. Well, no, defensive stance is the best tanking card ever. <laughs> but I mean, it's... I like the way you can choose. Like, do I want shield two or do I want retaliate one? And then it's like, well, I didn't, I didn't get attacked. So give me that heal. Then it's just, you know, at the like, so this card is either heal five self, end of a room, heal five self, whatever. Top action. Pretty good. Good good amount of heal. Shield two. In a pinch when you need it. You want a really hardcore tank. 12 initiative. This is good. This is good. <clears throat> Why or retaliate one? Your house rule in this or retaliate two? Well, retaliate is retaliate is as is a fairly strong mechanic um, as it starts to scale up. That's probably why.
Why does this have so many charges for a non-burn? That's crazy. Well, I mean, five... I mean, I, I don't know what, like, an average size scenario room, how many enemies would be in it. But I guess it depends, really, on the enemy types, right? Like, in certain scenarios where you have high-value enemies, there might only be, like, four figurines in each room. Four or five figurines. But in swarming-style scenarios, there could be a lot. Like, you know, if you've got a lot of vermilings in there, they're going to be clogging up the place. So, or imps as well, forest imps. The old... Forest Imps used to be half a point. I don't know if they're a point now, but they used to be half a point. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Five shield twos, you've burned through in one round. You've gone through the brute shield one permanent in a round before. Oh, um... Warding strength or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, in a two-player situation, you might have like four enemies. I feel like in two-player, this would be very good because you can pretty much guarantee that most of the time there's not going to be more, more than four or five enemies in the scenario each room anyway at a time. Obviously, certain scenarios are different and the way things work out, but I feel like it could be very, very reliable at two-player at... Single player, uh, sorry, two, uh, three player, a uh, four player. That's when maybe the numbers start to uh, shift a little bit against you in terms of being able to be a 100% re reliable tanking card, but probably not so much. I mean, it, this soaks up a lot of damage. You're a fan of this because it's reusable? Yeah. If you heal it off anyway, take the rat one. Yeah. I think it's possibly... It's a very fun card. If I was a tank, I'd be a little bit peeved, to be honest. This is the kind of... <laughs> this is the kind of card that... I almost wish it was on a different character. Do you know what I mean? Because like I, the way that I'm seeing this character right now is that, yeah, we are going to be a, a bit of a tank. But I like the kind of like trap synergy and attacking things and stuff. Like we haven't really played anything like really hardcore tanky. And we get to like level five and then we get a really, really good tanking card that's fun and interesting. Like it's almost like this card's too good for this class. <laughs> you know, it's too good for him. Doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Doesn't deserve it. <laughs> Needs to go to somebody more deserving. You want this with shield spikes? Yeah. Well, then you're always going to be choosing shield too, aren't you? <laughs> In your party, you can only have a trap build, chain guard, and a, a diff terrain build my effort there are no hexes safe <laughs> this plus the bottom shield three card plus armor plus void warden bonus just lo i mean loads of stuff if you could give this to the red guard you know chimeric formula is a thing it is a thing it exists Red Guard and Sun are jealous. Yeah, I, honestly, the way I feel about this is that this is this is is it's such a fun tanky guard because a lot of the time with tanks, it's like you sit there and you go, right, guys, I'm shielding, I'm retaliating, I'm done, and then when the enemy comes to attack you, it's like, okay, enemy's attacking you. Okay, yep. Yeah. What do they draw? I uh, draw a three. Okay, I have I have shield three, so I don't take any damage. Okay, next. Like this will be cool because it's like, okay, what's attacking me? All right, that's attacking me. Okay, um. All right, it's going to attack you for this. You're like, okay. Um, actually, I'm going to do Retaliate 1 because then I can kill it on my next turn. Like you can kind of pick and choose how you're going to do it. Well, I'll take Retaliate 1 because then it will die to wound damage. Like on the beginning of the next round. 
Okay, cool. That guy I'm going to shield against. You know, like it just gives you really good flexibility playing a tank. Usually a tank is just like you play a bunch of cards and see what happens. Yeah, I, I felt that this character is undeserving of this, in my opinion. I think it's great. It's a great design for a card. Great. But this character, from what I've seen so far, doesn't deserve it. <laughs> it needs to go needs to go to a better home, you know? Um, okay, what's the bottom of this, anyway? Whenever you may create a trap in an adjacent hex, you may create the trap in an empty hex within range 2 instead. Whenever you cause an enemy to spring a trap during your turn... The enemy suffers two damage. Oh. oh, God. Ooh, baby. I mean, that's like, I mean, this is it, right? This is the, this is, this is traps right now. Here it is. Like, this is. Is this better than the PS2? I mean, yeah, because you don't have to attack for it. No friend missing. But I guess you have to keep making the traps. Whereas, you know, PS2 on something, you could... In and all your allies get it too. So, in theory, it's quite a good, good value. It's probably not... Hmm, it's probably not quite as good. But the extra range on this could be quite good for swing. Because sometimes swing is going to make it so that the enemy's like, ah, oh, just like awkwardly not where you want them to be. And swing with range, you know, range two on the traps making. I think so. So we finally have a trap build guy. I mean, this is looking very, very promising. Yeah. Very, very promising. It's nice for placing traps behind enemies for allies to shove. Yeah, that's a good point too. We've got a bit of push ourselves as well, right? We did have a at least one card that was like push. Pierce won't always matter though. Well, I would argue that by the time you get to like level five, let's say you're playing on like, you know, you're playing on like plus one. I think at that point in time, a lot of enemies have shield. At least shield one. Like, I think you get to a point where it's almost weird that enemies that enemies don't have shield sometimes. I, don't know, I feel like it becomes quite prevalent. <clears throat> the PS2 is only going to be on one enemy at a time. Well, so is this really, right? Because it's only when an enemy is, springs a trap during our turn. So it's still very narrowly focused. It's still like, okay, we are doing this. The enemy, they're going to take an extra two damage, right? So similar to how I said, like, that PS2 could be the mind's weakness for you at higher levels. This is kind of like mind's weakness, but... A little bit weaker because, you know, there's more steps to it. Like, more, we still have to keep playing the traps. And we only have so many cards that play traps. We only have one card that plays an amazing trap. The other two traps that we play are fine. But they're not, like, incredible. So, you know, this basically turns that two damage trap into four damage. That poison, was it three damage and poison trap into, like, five. So... Do you know what I mean? Like, Pierce is going to be easy because you just you just shackle an enemy. Hey, everybody, we've now got Pierce 2 on this guy. So, I feel like the Pierce 2 is better. But this certainly would be what you would be looking at for the trap build. Like, if you're playing specifically the trap build, then the Pierce is not what you're doing because you're not attacking things. You're, you're pulling them. You're moving them around. You're not Drawing attack modifiers as often. <clears throat> mm -mm. For the PS2, you don't buy the mind speed because it doesn't buff attacks that apply shackle. I don't, I don't know what you mean. 
Oh, you mean the... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, that's because you shackle with the bottom of the card, though, right? You shackle all your, your bottom move. I see what you mean. Like, you don't get the first instance of it. But you just you use your bottom moves for shackles. Your bottom, your bottom action to shackles. And then you can immediately get used to it. Right? Like, I find like they're both very... They're very comparable but i think like on balance on like an average scenario the pierce is going to be better like overall like if you were to take you know, I don't know 10 scenarios i would think that that would probably add up to being a bit more damage over those 10 scenarios overall <clears throat> This makes the chain guard player be proactive with their traps. Push them. My push does find more damage. Yeah. But also, like, if... If, for example, an enemy walks into a trap on their turn, because of just the way that it all pans out, right? Um, you know, we talked about the Maya foot. You know, Maya foot with this character, putting difficult terrain everywhere, could, you know, end up there being some weird positionings, like enemies walk through traps. You know, you don't get that... You know, it's only when an enemy, when you spring them. I think if it, if it was just whenever a trap you placed has sprung or something, I don't know how you would word it, but if there was a little bit more freedom to it, then I'd be all over it. Yeah, for sure. But I just feel like it's actually fairly restrictive because it's asking you to have to trigger the traps, which I think like other things can happen in the game that would mean that traps just go off or whatever. Whereas I feel like the consistency of just walking up to a wind demon and being like, uh, you're shackled, so you lose flying, and we now have PS2 on all of our attacks against you is kind of like just more reliable. Obviously, you have to have the supporting cast around that. Like you have to have picked the attacking cards, right? You probably might pick more of the boring cards, let's say. But... I feel like, you know, that would be more reliable against someone like that. Right? <clears throat> hey, what distraction? Why am I streaming in 9.36? Lol, such a random resolution. It's actually, uh, it's Twitch science, my friend. I spent a long time researching it. The reason is, is that it is um, very comparable to 1080p like it's almost indistinguishable by the human eye plus most people actually watch um twitch on their phones or on second monitors like in smaller screens so a lot of people don't actually watch full screen 1080p but it lowers the amount of bandwidth that it takes for you to stream my stream so it makes my stream more reliable so if you have like, maybe not so hot internet or you know your connection is a bit dodgy or you're watching like you know over 4g 5g or something like that then the connection should be much more reliable. Twitch science. You go to a lot of big streamers, you'll notice they do exactly the same. <clears throat> the problem the problem that I have is that being an affiliate, I don't have transcoding. So if I had transcoding, I would stream in 1080 because then it would just lower the quality of the stream to fit whatever your bandwidth is. But Twitch does not give that to affiliates. So I have to basically choose like what's the best number to stream at and just hope. Um, but if I was a partner, I would have automatic transcoding, which would mean that when you start watching my stream, it will automatically lower the quality to whatever best suits your connection speed. But I don't have that privilege. So I have to, I have to pick a lane. A <clears throat> 400p or bust. <laughs> Yeah, if we had to do that, that would be troubling. <clears throat> mm. You tend to stream in 720 yourself due to those factors. 936 seems so random. Well, try it. Trust me, dude. Try it. You have to like manually... Um, like I would, I would advise Googling it and doing a little bit of light reading on it and getting the, the proper settings because there's a few settings you want to make sure that you've done correctly and set it up in OBS. 
but give it a go and see um you know it's a, it's a it's an easy way to improve the quality of your stream without super taxing people's bandwidth um or your own bandwidth as well <clears throat> weird thing to limit to partners no it's it's not it's really expensive to offer transcoding it's it's actually it kind of makes sense that they don't but it's it's frustrating don't get me wrong but they would have to charge like me a subscription fee it's expensive transcoding so there has to be like a level of you're making money for them so then to allow you to have it it's actually quite an expensive feature i know that seems stupid in today's day and age but it is yeah so it's annoying but understandable <laughs> It's one of the, it's like, it's pretty much the only reason that I want to make Twitch partner, if I'm honest. Like, the only reason I want to make Twitch partner is so that I can stream in 1080p and not have to worry about it. <laughs> Critical Role gets it. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> they get whatever they want. <laughs> okay, so anyway, talking more about impending power. I think we're a little bit on the fence here. Cross purposes, you know between which was better between the PS2, but likewise, this is a very, very strong effect though. So, um, you know, there's a bit of a trade-off here, burning a card like this. Did you lose that one? A really, a really nice top action. What's the other level five? Uh, tighten the chains. Attack four, add plus one attack and gain one XP if the target is shackled. Okay. So yeah, probably attack five. Uh, retaliate one self only applies to enemy to attacks by shackled enemies so then reflect maybe one damage back which again is, is okay but uh, it's it's like marginal because again we have to take the we have to take the damage to do it i don't think that's that great we've this number has just been creeping up from like three to four to to five right <laughs> It's like, well, it's like this, this kind of effect has just been like, one more, one more. Every other level, like, oh, plus one more. <clears throat> Does this imply you can shackle more than one enemy? Yes. I, I don't know. Like we said that before. The, the, it was very clear on the, on the mat that we can only have one shackled enemy. But likewise with, you know, augments or dooms, is there a card coming that breaks that rule? Like it's a passive that we play and all it says, you may have two shackles. Like that would be the passive ability in play that. It'd be a very simple ability to go out. I would not be surprised because it would be a very easy ability to like design and put into the game. So the way the cards are worded also kind of implies that because it seems to be implying that, you know, attack a shackled enemy, not, you know, attack your shackled enemy or something, you know. It's also maybe a bit of just consistent Gloomhaven wording as well going in there, but yeah. Solid but boring. Yeah, I, I think I would agree with that summation there. The bottom is at the end of each of your turns, you may perform a pull one range two targeting one shackled enemy. Mm. Nah. Nah, I don't I don't like that one. That feels like a lot of the time you're not gonna care about that, right? Feels like a lot of the time. It just doesn't do that. Like it just you're like, eh, I don't want it. Seems Definitely, definitely, easily the worst of our burn uh, passives that we've seen. I'll tell you what, if this said something different though, if this said something like, at the end of each of your turns, you may perform a pull one range two, um, shackle the targeted enemy, right? Like, so instead of you having to target a shackled enemy, it shackles somebody and pulls them towards you. How cool would that be? That would actually be like, huh... Like, how valuable is that action? It's like a free shackle. And because it pulls them close to you, they then, you know, can't do their move action. It just feels the fact that they have to already be shackled is a bit weird because... 
like a lot of the time we're kind of sh either attacking to shackle something adjacent to us already or we're pulling something closer and shackling it i don't know maybe that'd be too good but that's to me it just seems very underwhelming as it is written right now <clears throat> Uh, it sounds like you've done some testing then, Destruction. Yeah, it says a lot. I mean, if you're also playing on like a Switch and stuff as well, if you're playing like other consoles, there's probably a lot more to it. I don't have to worry about that too much. It probably doesn't help that I like display, like like I use a 4K monitor for my stream monitor as well, which is probably not the best. Like I have two 4K monitors, which are probably not really the best. So I should probably downsize that because i'm kind of view i'm also viewing the game at a weird resolution like i'm viewing my screen on a weird resolution which is why i like all of my icons are very small <clears throat> at the end of the scenario you may gain two xp yeah yeah maybe yeah hmm Seems like it's supposed to help the trap build, but in a worse way. Yeah, I guess. But then I... Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't like... I don't like this card, if I'm honest. I mean... If... If you're not... Doing traps... Then I think that this is just value, so you probably just take it. It's 17 initiative attack five. You know, you're not you're not you're taking that. Um But this is kind of fun. And this is fun too. There's another tough one. I tell you what, this character has a lot of tough level ups. And the thing is that there's kind of something there for both builds at each level up, which is interesting. Not always the case. Right, let's get let's get moving a little bit. I just realized the time. Okay, suffering steel, retaliate for self. Okay, ignore all sources of damage from attacks targeting you by shackled enemies this round. Oh god. Oh. Oh, God. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, nah. No. This is what the no emotes for. <laughs> well, it's made. Perfect timing. Oh. Sad. <laughs> This is possibly, this is possibly microbots territory chat. It's, it's close. I mean, I'd, pro I'd rather have this over microbots, I think. <laughs> It's not that bad. I mean, come on. The worst burning crimson scales? I mean, I I mean, I can't remember every card that we've gone over. I'm sure there has definitely been some stinkers. I mean, this does do damage. And if you play it at the right time, sure. Oh 
But man. Maybe worst card in Crimson Scales. I'm maybe down for that. So far, it's it's really not good. Because you just you're gonna take so much damage. Like you need to have shields. If you had a bunch of shield, maybe not. Like this is like a combo piece card, so. In theory, if you had a character giving you a bunch of shield and you kind of immobilize the enemies or whatever, and it was all going to work out perfectly. Like, you can have good turns with this, whereas with microbots, you cannot have good turns. There's no way you can make microbots good. There's none. Whereas at least with this, there is a way you could make it good, right? At least it's not a double burn, true. Nine initiative, that's our earliest initiative yet, I think. Move three, retaliate to self. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Not really what I'm about with this character, but sure. Works really well with the, um, with impending power. So if we went down, if, you know, we got a really good pick at five and six. <laughs> Suddenly we're going to have shield two, retaliate two, potentially three. If you wanted to go for that option. I mean, that's a really good tanking turn. On nine initiative. It's an option. What's the matter with the nine initiative move three retaliate two? Let's not over exaggerate. It's fine. It's good. But it's it's a low initiative. What I'm saying is this is not exciting for me. Like, I think it works very, very well with this previous level five, though. So that's got to be a good consideration. But it's the retaliate is I see retaliate is like extra damage, right? On top as a bonus. Unless you're going hard on it in certain ways. And I feel like this character has a bit of a sub theme of a little bit of tanking. But it's very hard to cram three good builds into a character. Like, it's it's difficult. You know, I think it's difficult enough to get two sometimes. Um, so we've obviously got, like, more of a, you know, an attacking shackled enemies type thing with a lot of swing. And then we've got, like, the trap build, which is a little bit more pull-focused. Pull so you've got, like, a few permutations there. Now, in terms of the tanking build, we had really nothing. We had very, very little until five and then we get this which is which is a very strong tanky card which is why i said like what is this card doing on this character because like i feel like this feels out of place because everything else leading up to this hasn't really had us like i mean it's it's great but like, we, we weren't really that type of character or that feeling <laughs> like I, to me this character felt a little bit more like a bolt you know like, you're a melee character, you've got some health, you can wear some armor, and sure, occasionally you can take an attack for your team, but it's not, like, the main focus of your character. You have a little bit of extra b benefit you get, like a couple of retaliates, a little, little bit of extra value you can get here and there, but it's not, like, the main theme. Then you get landed with this, which is, like, a huge shield potential, like, cool, and then we get hit with this, which adds a bunch of retaliate, which is not, you know, it's good. But saying le level six taking a move three is not really what I'm hugely about. I'd much rather have something more fun, right? Mm. Mm. This plus the top shield two is using a nine and twelve in one round. A little wasteful, but would be a good combo if you get hit for any two three per hit. Yeah. I mean, it gives you a nice sort of turn off, I think. It's fine. Let's see what the other level six is. Like, this isn't... Like, this is the type of card that you would just default to because it's a good move, good initiative, has a little bit of upside to it too. Like, you, you would default to this type of effect a lot of the time. Like, like if the other card does not, like, blows you away, then you can pretty comfortably pick a card like this because it's just reliable. Uh, Titanic Chain Whip. Attack four, range three, pull two, shackle. Um... And that's pretty decent. Brings an enemy nice and close right away. Brings an enemy in. Good with the trap build. Good with, well, good with any build, really. Just attack four range three. Does it all. The bottom is pull four range five wound and shackle. Also pretty good.
Hmm, yeah. Bit awkward, that one. I mean, I'm usually an advocate for taking, like, the lowest initiative pretty much most of the time. But actually, I just don't... I don't know. Thing is, is that at level 5, what do we have? I guess we took the 17, probably. Oh, actually, maybe not, because we're doing the trap build. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, little small permutations you could do with this character. Like, take a slightly different card here, take a slightly different card there. This would be a... F this also wouldn't be a bad um, level to go back and take another card if you wanted to. Like, looking at both of these cards, I mean... They're fine, but they're not, like, um, incredible. So, this could be a good go back and take a different card type level if you if you wanted to. <clears throat> Do I ever play board games on stream? Um, no, I haven't yet. My plan is to play some Crimson Scale soon, though, which is this. I would definitely like to. I'll be playing Frosthaven definitely as well. <clears throat> You're doing Chain Whip, you think? I think Chain Whip's... Chain Whip's fine, right? This will go back a level? Yeah. If you did want to do some tanking, I mean, these, this is, these are two good cards together. But if you did go for this for the trap build, then you could just go back and take this and feel pretty good about it. Interesting idea. Yeah, level six is a little bit of a swing and a miss for me. You know, not, not bad abilities, just not necessarily, you know, blowing your mind. And you can't, not every level can blow your mind. You, you need some role player abilities mixed in. And this certainly, this is just does a bit of everything, doesn't it? Tax pulls, okay initiative. This is just a move three. With, with some upside, hopefully. Or nine, which is not, which is decent. Fine. Yeah. Bit of a choose, choose your poison, pick your poison type level, that one. <clears throat> Bottom of chain whip, combos with the three damage poison trap with a persistent burn, five damage, wound poison, shackle, turn at range five. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, it's a very good one. Yeah, I think if you're playing, like, if you're playing um, the trap build, you just want more pull and any, any way you can get it, right? I guess, too. Any way you can get, and especially on, like, both halves, you've got pull on both. So you've got so much flexibility. And here we have another trap card coming up. A clamping snare. Create a five damage muddle trap in an adjacent empty hex. When the trap is sprung, all enemies adjacent to the trap suffer two damage. Nice. A little bit of a detonate ability right there. So again, that would have comboed really nicely with chain whip. Twenty nine, twenty seven, and of course could be so five damage plus potentially with the um, the loss. That would be seven damage. Not bad. Also, with if you were to pull with that other weird one, whatever it was, even more damage potentially. I mean, you just want more traps, I think, in general. If you're playing the trap build, the one thing that's holding you back is the ability to make traps. Because you've only got three cards that make traps. So, you know, and they vary quite heavily in how good they are. You've got one that's like insane three damage and wound you got one that's like good three damage and poison and then you've got one that's like eh, two damage <laughs> now you add a five damage trap to it now we're talking <clears throat> trap build will get you so much xp yeah true you'd also just be constantly getting xp from playing traps there are some items that create traps interesting well, you definitely want those then. You definitely want those. Yeah, ghost is ghost. The reason this is very strong. Move four, shield three. 
self only applies to attacks by shackled enemies. I mean, that's 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 fine, actually. This would be quite good if you're down to like the final um, enemy in a room or something, or like maybe the last couple of enemies in a room. You just shield up really heavily against one particular enemy, and then you know you control the other one or kill the other one or whatever, and then it's basically the same as you just sort of controlling them. It's like an, an, a level of control that you can use because um, they just their attacks will just bounce off you or will nearly bounce off you. So that that I think is is really good. Still looking at that idea that maybe we can get more than one shackle. You gotta hope. Biggest move. Um, I don't think we've had anything more than a move four. No. Well, no, we had a move six, but that was a burn. And then, like, it was the burn that pulled people through. So we have had a move six. But yeah, this would... We've, we haven't had any larger than four as a reusable move. All right, so the other one... Oh, no, God. There's a word. Why is there always a word? Attack 5, add disarm, and gain 1 XP if the target is shackled. <sighs> Maybe we just need to significantly make everything worse so that traps can exist in the world. <laughs> Please. You like this name, Meteor Hammer? It's an item in Dosa called Meteor Hammer. Sure is strong. You're taking the trap card. <laughs> well, you know, uh, we have this debate often. But, you know, this, this, you know, this is a premium effect. I guess the only thing is, is that potentially, like, maybe you're just killing the guy who's shackled. So maybe it's not. Maybe the disarm's kind of maybe wasted a little bit, but this card basically says attack five disarm on it. That's going to be very good. You don't think this is insane? You don't think this is insanely more strong than a... I mean, yeah, to some, this splash, this splash damage is interesting. I think maybe, you know, you'd maybe hope that you could get maybe two to four damage out of this. I don't think you'd get much more than that, but this is an attack five disarm. Ignore the enemy. Like, skip a go. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. That's all this says to the enemy. <clears throat> the trap is more powerful. I mean, look at uh, raw damage, possibly, but this is also an attack. You know, we could always draw a plus two. Could be a seven. Disarm is just so premium. Because you just, you just disarm the enemy. You don't have to worry about them. Next turn, you finish them off. It just makes the game a breeze to play. It makes the game so simple to play. You know, with this, you're like, sure. You create a five damage model. You, you drop in. You know, the enemy draws a plus two and a times two. Because Gloomhaven, you got Gloomhaven. Take a bunch of damage. It just deals with an enemy so cleanly. That is... Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you guys that this is more fun. And this is what I want to be doing. Absolutely. But like, as we said before, it's like these cards just need to not really exist. Because, you know, as a person who often needs to play as efficient as I possibly can, this is an ability that's incredibly efficient. <clears throat> Cannot miss with a trap. 
True. But because you're, if you're disarming, then missing is not as bad, right? It's like the whole, like, same thing with stun. If you miss on a stun attack, yeah, it sucks a bit. But, I mean, ideally, they're still stunned. You don't, you don't get a complete blowout. Also, this this needs also you know this needs another card with it, right? You got to play two cards together. You know this. I could do this. Then my bottom action, do whatever I want, right? The, the the target does need to be shackled, so there is, yeah. So maybe you might have to play something to shackle them. You're not just gonna be able to run around disarming everything, but it's it's very powerful. I'm with you though, chat. I would much prefer to be playing with this, and I and I would probably pick this, but it's really hard to, to ignore something like this. Um. <clears throat> in all serious you're tempted to take it for the sheer value but you converted to team trap and you're all in at this point yeah i mean there's definitely like this character definitely feels to me like there is like an efficient build right this is quite an efficient action this is not a bad this is uh, not a bad fairly efficient action like it's boring but it could be quite efficient um you got uh was it this one this efficient so it feels like there's like one where it's like hey you like to run around and attack things for like four and five here you go here's your build you want to mess around with traps so here's a different build so the bottom of this was move three during all your attacks against shackled enemies this round ignore the shield value oh that's quite good too Oh boy, they made a card here, huh? They made a card here. Drill fist says hello. How does swing work? So swing is like push and pull, except the enemy must remain at the same distance from you. So it's like you're swinging them round in a corner. So you choose either clockwise or anti-clockwise, and then you can move them up to the number of spaces on the swing. So... They just always stay the same distance from you. <clears throat> There's a, a attack of shackled enemy build and a trap whirlwind build. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is also just val like, yeah, this card's, yeah. This one's for the people who, who know. <laughs> this is the ones for the people who know. This is the ones for, you know, like if I was playing a deadly run, I feel like I, I would be hard pressed to play something like this, but this would be like such, such an easy pick, you know? Boring, but easy. Like if you want to win, increase difficulty, you, you may, you would probably have better success. However, you wouldn't have as much fun. All right, level eight. Pivot and smash. Swing four. Target one enemy within two hexes. One enemy the target moves through suffers two damage. Okay. It's a lot of swing. Attack five. Target the enemy targeted with the swing. Okay. Okay. So this is like an attack five with hopefully a bit of two damage to something else. A bit of splash damage to somebody else. That's okay. A little bit. It feels very samey to that other ability that we had early on. But maybe not even quite as good. I don't know. Did we have the one that was like an attack two and attack two? Or attack three, attack three? I don't know. It's a, it feels very similar, almost exactly the same, just worded slightly differently with slightly different values, but ultimately ends up being incredibly similar. This is melee, right? Yes. I guess it's like fake melee. Trap trigger into attack five, hopefully, yeah. But the swing build seems to be a little bit more, well, a bit more of a, swing's like a hybrid ability, right? Which, by the way, is a really good good way of designing this class. I really like it in um, 
like so like in magic when you're drafting right i really like it when you have like a mechanic that is sort of shared by two builds like so you could be playing like i don't know one particular archetype um and then you'd be playing like another particular archetype but you both share like one mechanic that kind of like is useful across both usually like i find that a lot in like draft sets where it's like um like um ally color sets and stuff like that like dual color sets like, like ravnica or um khans was quite good for that uh khans of Tarkia, i think was the name of the set that was that was three color set um like i always really like that because it kind of allows you to splash like um, that mechanic a little bit in and it's useful for you and swing feels like that for this class feels like the the kind of splash the little kind of yeah it's good for both builds you can use it in many ways <clears throat> Okay. So what was the other card? I was going to look at the other card, wasn't I? There was a card that basically did the same thing. At like level four? Yeah, here you go. Sweeping Collision. It was swing four. Target one adjacent enemy and then attack three. Target the enemy targeted with the swing. Ability and one enemy the target moved through. Right, it's the same ability. Just slightly different without the shackle. Right? That to me feels very, very samey. Anoot Noot. Like, do you not think? They're very, they're very, very similar. So a point where I don't know that Pivot and Smash is much better. I think it's because it's two attack threes versus one attack five, but two damage, which I guess is better. But could be worse, I guess, if you were to get on some hot streak and draw a plus two and a times two. They're probably, probably, probably a little bit better. And obviously it's to guarantee two damage as well, which is quite nice. Um, this is at range two as well, rather than adjacent, right? It's maybe a little bit more flexible. Where's the new counter? It's above in the uh, up here. I I don't really have a good place to to place it on this scene, to be honest. I j it just ended up there after one stream, and it sort of just stayed up there. <clears throat> it's nice for the extended range traps persistent. Uh, make a trap next to an enemy two spaces away. Swing them into it and attack for five. Yeah. I don't know. It just It just feels very samey to what we've already had before. I don't know. I'm not sold on, on this ability, if I'm honest. Um, move four, jump. Shackle one enemy, move through with the move ability. Okay, nice. Pull three, target one shackle. Okay. So, again, this is just a, a, bit, a bit more of a... A similar version to what we've had before. Some variation on what we've had. This whole card's just basically an improvement on previous abilities. Essentially. Just a bit better than what we've had before. Nothing new, but sometimes that's good enough, right? Just a slightly different variant of what you were doing. A bit better. Because we had one that did move three jump. Shackle one enemy move through, but then that was it. And then we've also had a burn, which was move six. Um... Shackle an enemy, move six, then pull them that way. So, you know, we've had this type of thing you know, before across a burn. A bit more powerful, but it was a burn. I like it. I agree. Top not super exciting at level eight, yeah. Let's have a look at the other card. I feel like this is a, is a decent card. It upgrades... It upgrades a lot of what we do. It's a good kit. Like, it's just good kit. Um, let's see what the other card does. 
Syndicated Assault, Swing 6, Range 3. This The target may move through your allies with this ability. All allies move through may immediately perform an attack 3 ability target there. Okay, so again, an improvement on what we had before, right? This is weird, though. Range 3? I guess you'd... Well, you'd probably just do this at range 1 or 2, wouldn't you? Do this with the trap. Swing them through a trap. Oh, hold up. <laughs> hold up. That's funny, you guys. Go hit it. Well, at least this time we're not muddling them, right? Last time we had to muddle our allies to do this. And it was like, well, thanks. <laughs> Seems like it will require a four-player party. Um, Yeah, last time I think it was like push. It was push, though. Last time it wasn't swing. It was push. It was like push three. So this is swing six. So in theory, you could get it through maybe two allies, which would be quite good. But you'd really have to get your allies to position themselves as well, right? This asks a lot of your teammates as well. Like, oh, you need to end your turn here. You need to go there. As a, as a solo player, I think this would be fine. Like, I think I could get it to work quite well. But in a multiplayer situation... Might be a bit tricky, like if everybody's not, you know, communicating really clearly or they have their own plans, they have their own thing they want to go and do, like. And the fact that it you don't get to do anything, like you don't get to do an attack, it doesn't shackle, does make it potentially a bit of a dead card at times in your hand or the top action is it? a dead top action. So this bottom, though, I mean, it's got some of my favorite words. Move two, attack three, target all adjacent enemies. There we go. Pretty good. To be honest, it might just be pivot and smash, though. Just for more kind of thing. We don't have very much AoE, so this could be a good way to get some AoE in. Like, literally, the first bit of AoE we've really got is that uh, that model trap thing. That's, like, true, like, three enemies or so. Like, we got a few things that could do some damage to a few enemies on a turn. But, you know, this is a way that we could potentially move in, kill a bunch of stuff. Works really well with the shield card, too, huh? Look at that. Move two, attack for three. Whack the top of impending power down. You do it on 12 initiative shield up like anything that you don't kill don't worry i got it i'm tanking it guys don't worry i can handle it or use retaliate to finish them off if you didn't quite get the job done seems like quite a powerful um two card combo you also have double ko oh yeah this plus double ko too but that would have to be quite late right because double ko was like 96 initiative or was it not 96 I swear it was late. Yeah, 92. So, uh, the, in the initiative would have to be a super late one. Which might not play too nicely into this. Because like, the idea with a card like this, really, is you just want to wipe some enemies out very, very quickly. But I guess you could go late. Use a pair of, um... Use a pair of, like, rocket boots or something to get in there. The problem with that only being a move two is that positioning yourself might be hard without jump or plus movement, right? You kind of need them both. So maybe you're going to need them rocket boots. Pivot and smash or meteor hammer. Oh, go back and take meteor hammer. I mean, you could do that too. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's, let's crack into the level nines. I will say that I feel like this character, compared to maybe some of the last couple that we've done, has not fallen off the cliff. You know, there was... 
you know, some of the kind of common criticisms I have of a lot of character design is that it gets to like level seven and it's like, oh, well, the, you know, we're getting towards the end now. Everything has to feel super powerful so that, you know, you just start getting loads of like really, like really, really broken stuff. Um, and I don't feel like that's been the case with this character. I feel like they've just been still just been adding like, hey, here's another good trap. Like, you know, they're not really like, doesn't feel like we're being pr pushed too hard. Doesn't feel, it feels like we're still like, we're getting a bit more powerful, but we're not like suddenly exploding with some silly card that we just want to stamina potion again and again and again. Like it just feels like, yeah, we're, we're okay. You could say maybe the disarm one could maybe fall into that category a little bit, but I, I do feel like generally they've done a good job of getting this to like feel like we're not just suddenly getting like bam here's like your best card and uh every other card before this has been <laughs> it's been disregarded now this is your new plan you play this one card <laughs> you know <clears throat> so let's see what the level nines go there it is. So it took it till level nine, guys, but we. Our spidey sense was right. Champion of Chains. You may have up to three enemies shackled at any time. Whenever you shackle an enemy, that enemy yeah, gains boy, wound. A little bit spicy. And when you play this card, you get to do pull two, range three, target three, shackle. So you just immediately shackle three things. I mean, if you're talking about a good first turn. All right, on my first turn, I move. Pull three guys, wound them all, shackle them all. Now that's a lot of damage. Also, this turns on. The good thing about this as well is this turns on so many of your other cards that were like kind of like, uh, is that good? Uh, oh, I don't know. Is that any good? What? I'm invisible against three enemies now? Right? What? Permanent retaliate too? Pierce one against them? Easier to hit. Where's the... Come on. Where's the... Uh... Where was the uh, the shield one? Where's the shield one? There was definitely a shield one. Where are you? Where are you? More retaliate there. Actually, maybe make Suffering Steel slightly better. <laughs> Where's the one? This one. Boom. Clamping Snare? I mean... Ooh. Nice. <clears throat> A lot of Shackle. Party won't like that. Three flying enemies can't fly and have no shields. Oh, yeah. Plus the pierce one. Oh, my God. Nice. Oh, this is... Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That, that gets pretty nuts at level nine, huh? Okay. You guys don't have flying anymore. And everybody gets pierced two against you. Enjoy. I mean, I'm glad that we've got something like this. Because it's just, it's the pinnacle of what, of what you've been leading up to. And it's always good when a card like this comes along at level nine or high level and just says, hey, you need, you need to go back and reevaluate your cards. Like, you know, some of these cards now are going to be like, like this, this is a powerful effect in itself, but it's now made 
so many other of your cards more powerful, which is just really good design. It's like, yeah, that card's been good, been pretty good. It's been okay. I probably prefer to play the top a lot of the time with some of these cards, but then suddenly it's like, wow, now suddenly I'm going to get shield three against three guys. Maybe I don't play the five damage muddle trap. Maybe I do actually just shield up and use the, a, a different trap or something like that, you know? Sort of like really flips things on your, on its head and really gets you to like reevaluate and suddenly you're like, whoa. Like just it's improved everything. It's a huge power spike. It's just like everything has just gotten better. Nine should be nuts. Yeah, I totally agree. Nine should be crazy. And I particularly enjoy it when the nine goes back and makes other cards better. It's not just good in itself. Like it becomes like, oh, like for example, Inferno is a bad example of this because Inferno is just, oh yes, we've got Inferno. Yeah, I can just attack everything. Great. It's a, it's a great card in itself. It didn't improve on anything that the Spellweaver was doing. It didn't say, oh, by the way, reviving, you can now use reviving ether twice or something like that. Then you'd be like, what? That would suddenly like completely change the way you want to play that character. Like just flip it on his head. Like what? I can play reviving ether twice now? So how do I play? Well, maybe I play like a tank spell weaver and I just burn all these cards to like mitigate damage. And then I use like ice armor and like, you know, like it make it would make you just completely readjust how you wanted to play the character potentially. Um, it's not like the act of play like this playing it on its own is pretty powerful, but the actual effect of this is not like you know not like su like super crazy. But now suddenly it's made everything else so much better. Okay, let's look at the bottom though. But 10 initiative, really great initiative. Second earliest we've seen. Swing 6, add shackle, range 3. At any point during the ability, you may perform push 4, targeting the shackled enemy. 6 and shackle. Nice. So yeah, basically, we could like swing them for 3, push them away for 4, and then continue the swing. could be very very good at getting somebody quite far away from you but this does feel a bit of a throwaway ability when you've got something like this kicking out here i mean this just screams turn one play like it just screams it it's i i'd be very surprised if anyone uses the bottom of this card ever the only problem with this is i guess is that as i think nit said earlier we have so many good passives that, you know, you're going to have to pick your lane. You know, which one are you going for? Like, you know, we've got 11 cards. We burn this, we're down to 10. What, we burn the one that gives us Pierce and, you know, Shackles flying enemies. Okay, well, now we're down to nine. We're going to have to, like, get going, you know? Does Swing need line of sight? Yes, it does. I mean, it does to initiate the ability. Any target, the ability effect must be in line of sight the figure using the of it. So uh, presumably you could swing them out of line of sight. Same as you could kind of push an enemy out of line of sight. But they would have to be in line of sight initially. Cool. Well, what's the other level nine then? I guess we'll be expecting some kind of trap thing. Right, unending torment. Whenever you cause a shackled enemy to spring a damage trap during your turn, that enemy suffers double the damage value of the trap. A lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. So you can swing them to another room. Uh, potentially, but they can't open doors, right? But yeah. Remember that they can't get further away from you, though. 
Like swing is swing is like they're not allowed to get further away from you. So that might be tricky. Wow. Okay. So double damage traps. But you're gonna suffer one damage each time you shackle an enemy. It's not a great down. That's not a bad downside. <laughs> it's a bit of a downside, right? But I think we I think we can cope. I think we can deal with that. Kind of interesting. Also with scenario level traps, man. Ooh. It's also the damage value of the trap, not double damage of like everything that happens. So like, so now you're looking at 10 damage for the um, model trap. That would do 10 now. The wound trap would now do six. Poison trap would do six. Now we could do 12 damage latch and toes. That's more than Bane. Yep. Yep. Yes, we can. I do feel like... I don't know. I do feel like this was... This is more... F I don't know. This feels more fun to me, though. I don't know. I, I like this character because there's, like, two different... Like, I really like this level 9. But I feel like... The trap build is more fun going through the leveling process. But then you get to level nine and you suddenly get this, which is like, hey, that, you know, going for all of those shackles was really worth it. Hmm. Tough. Bomb is force one shackled enemies before move three with you controlling the ability. Shackled enemies suffer one damage each time they are targeted with an attack this round. Again, same as the other one, like whatever. It's, uh, what you call it? Strangling chain. It's kind of like strangling chain. Would this not work on the bottom of the level six chain whip since it pulls before the shackle? Hmm? Would this not work on the bottom of the level six chain whip since it pulls before the shackle? Not sure. It's, yeah, but they're separated effects. In theory, if the enemy died, you would never apply shackle. So shackle to me, in a situation like this and this, reads very much like wound or poison, right? It's an, it's an effect of the attack. So you perform the action, pull four, range five, right? You do that. Then once you've completed the action, like, so let's say you pulled it through a bunch of traps and let's say they die. Because they died, the wound and the shackle would never go off. So therefore, it wouldn't matter, right? Is that what you mean? Because this is just a permanent thing, which is whenever sh we shackle, you, just, you take one damage. So, you know, you can get this through many ways. Like... However, certain other effects, for example, like... We want to look at the fetch one again, right? Like, so this is pull three and shackle. So this is this shackles as part of the pull. This isn't pull three, range four, shackle. Interesting why that's worded that way. Like pull three and shackle. Maybe that's because of the intent. I think that's interesting why this is worded so differently to this. My only feeling would be that because shackle is part of the pull action, so therefore the performing of the pull immediately initiates shackle. So I would like to pull three, which shackles them. Right? <clears throat> I 
You need to shackle them before pulling them into a trap for the double damage. Yes. <clears throat> I don't feel like the one damage is that much of a downside though, right? Really? I mean, come on. We should, we should just be kind of assassinating things. Left, right, and center with this thing. Yeah, they need to be shackled somehow before hitting the trap with some cards. Like, yeah, so because it says whenever you cause a shackled enemy to spring it, in theory, yes, with the bottom of the whip, they wouldn't be shackled because they would be pulled through. So it does make chain whip worse. That's a very interesting thing for the FAQ, though. Very interesting. Um... Very interesting idea. Hmm. Well, I think we got two home runs level nines, haven't we? Chat. Absolutely two home run level nines, I think. Both interesting in their own right. Both going to be a bunch of fun in their own right. Um... I think this character is very, very well designed. Like, I think there's just, like, it's just solid. Really solid, fun mechanics. I've always said I wanted a character to be, you know, better at traps. I want to see a character do traps well. And this character does that. Um, so that's really, you know, good to see. I like the shackle mechanic in general as well. I think just like shackling stuff up and getting some bonus towards it. It's pretty thematic. Works quite well. Yeah, overall, it's a very, very interesting character. Two build paths, trap damage or consistent attacks. That are better versus shackled enemies. Yeah. Two, cl two clear um, kind of build paths. However, you know, with swing, I do feel like you've got that linchpin in the middle there, which you could, you know, in theory, take a little bit like, so if you are doing the consistent, like more, more kind of like the, the I'm attacking things type build, you could always, you know, bring the odd little bit of traps in because you've got, you got that swing mechanic, which can also help trigger you trigger traps, regardless. So they kind of share some middle ground there, which means that as a player, you can kind of play a little bit around with both. This character also, to me, feels very like new player safe because it's, I mean, it's packed with just good level up decisions. There was only like one bad one, right? Which was the retaliate four. We won't talk about it again, but like in general, every single level, you could pretty much pick either of the two cards. Like you could blind pick and you'd probably be fine. Like there really wasn't a bad, bad card. There was some like maybe slightly underwhelming levels. Like we said, I think six was maybe not so underwhelming. But now that we see like the maybe the grand scheme of traps and things like that, then suddenly Chain Whip, I think, becomes a bit more valuable than maybe we initially thought at the time. So, you know, generally speaking, as long as you stay away from Suffering Steel, <laughs> you've got... You can't really go wrong with this character. Now, there is going to be quite a bit of skill in playing the character well. I do think that's the case. Less so maybe with the Shackle build, but with the... With the trap builds, you're obviously going to have to... You're, you're not only going to have to focus on, like, this turn, but next turn and even the turn after that. Like, it's going to feel a lot more rigid in its play style. Because if you, if you fall out of sync for whatever reason, you know, so then you don't play your pull or your trap card before you play your pull, then suddenly you're going to be kind of a little bit at odds. Um, also, what I thought was kind of interesting that I've only just thought of that I realized... This character 
does not create or use a single element the entire time. There's none. There's nothing. Nada. Very scoundrel-esque. No, uh, we don't need no elements. Oh, Kira, you just said exactly the same thing. Yeah, not a single element. Which is kind of interesting. I've always thought, I've always, I've always used that as a bit of a bone of contention with the scoundrel. I've always seen that as a negative rather than a positive. Um, I think it's good to not just cram stuff in though, just because, right? You know, let's not overcomplicate a character when we don't need to. So I appreciate the simplicity by just keeping it. Hey, we know what we do. We've got a very strong vision for this character. You know, thematically, it doesn't really make sense that they would create elements. Like what they're doing is not really like, you know, they're a brawler. They're down there. They're using their weapon, you know, their chain. Then they're using traps. You could maybe say that traps could maybe give off some kind of um, element. Maybe if they were sprung or something like that. But not really that style of character. Like, it's not really in the theme of the character. So, I don't mind it. It does mean... Um, oh, Scoundrel makes and uses dark. Yeah, that's true. You do have one element that you do use. That's fair. But I think it's a, it's a bit of a side, side note to that character. Um... That is, that is true. She does. I forget. I always forget about that because it's literally like one card that you want to use it with. Um, so yeah, I think like that. I think I think that's fine. Like just go straight in. Like don't don't you know don't overcomplicate things. You don't need to. A character that's going to be quite straightforward seems to be incredibly well balanced in terms of um, power level. I would say as well. Like, I don't... I mean, at level 9, it feels like you can start doing some crazy things. But, hey, everyone should be able to do crazy things at level 9. That's the whole point. So, there we have it. There is the Inox Chain Guard. A really cool character. I think using traps is definitely something that I think a lot of players have been just wanting, really. Because there's never been a good character that uses traps. And so many people kind of come into my chat when we're playing Gloomhaven and just sort of say... You know, is there a potential to use this trap? Is this card good? You know, because they feel like they should be good, but they just don't ever really quite work. And it's really awesome to see that a character is sort of out there that's been created that actually really plays to some of those strengths, uses those traps, uses a lot of positioning and has some really cool mechanics. And the shackle mechanic is simple, but it has quite a lot of depth to it in the way you want to play. So yeah, I really, uh, I really thought this character was a home run really for me. Just really well designed, really well tested, felt like kind of like a, a traditional gloomhaven character if you like. like it wouldn't feel out of place in a normal copy of gloomhaven i think that's always a very very good sign for these kinds of characters a big thank you again to all of my supporters over on twitch the subs and also over on patreon for the support i really appreciate it. if you would like to support the channel out patreon and twitch are great opportunities to do that and i really do appreciate everyone that does and mike and truck driving gamer for the legendary support over on patreon guys incredibly kind of you i really appreciate it thank you so much if you would like to come and hang out live, come over to twitch.tv slash quest every Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday, where I'm usually either playing Gloomhaven, talking about Gloomhaven, or ranting about Gloomhaven, or whatever, but we're usually doing something to do with that. So just come hang out, and uh, I'm always happy to answer any questions about Gloomhaven Live. Okay, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Bye. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Oh, 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 o